Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing the first episode of uh, General Ideas for Victoria 3. Uh, we're just going to be talking about a lot of Victoria 3 ideas. Um, it's going to be almost entirely audio only. Uh, it's only going to be half video. And uh, so maybe boot up the game and listen to it in the background. I have with us today uh, We Play Games, uh, who is another Victoria 3 creator. You can check out his links, which will be uh, down below, or you can just search in the YouTube uh, We Play Games. What's up? How's it going? How's it going, man? Really excited to talk about Victoria 3. Great game. Me too. Lots of problems. A lot of problems. Uh, is there a specific... Uh, well, actually, let's go in order a little bit uh, yeah. in regards to my sheet, so that'll make it easier to do uh, timestamps later, which there should be down below. Um, so, the first thing I wanted to talk about is the investment pool malice. Uh, how um, I don't think it's realistic, um, and... Uh, at least applied to the capitalists, it makes sense on, you know, the, what is it, uh, CE, was that, I forget what it stands yeah, for. The command economy. Perfect, exactly. I think it makes a lot yeah. of sense, but not for laissez-faire, because the invisible hand of the market is uh, good, unless you're simulating monopolies, something like this. I think, I think broadly, and this is something that I know we wanted to talk about in the future, but like, I think broadly a lot of the decisions that they are making are, are being made for performance sake. Uh, but I think that like from a meta perspective, without having worked at Paradox, I don't know what their goals are. But like the numbers in terms of GDP that most people end up with, even if you're like hyper optimizing, you're still going to end up with GDPs that are going to be kind of different from what the world looked like in 1936. So I like... The investment pool malice is there pretty obviously to slow down economic growth. Is that necessarily logical, right? What should GDPs, what should economies look like by the 1930s in Victoria 3 is one of those design questions that I can't answer for them. Right. I, like, I think the investment pool malice is largely not good and feels like a stopgap, but also it if it's supposed to represent lost efficiencies due to monopolies maybe it makes sense i mean it's it's one of those questions that i think kind of hands hangs over the game and, and makes it one of those games that's great with lots of problems <laughs> yeah the the way i think about it like if you wanted to simulate monopolies because uh when there's a monopoly it creates a dead like in terms of economics like actual economics it creates a dead dead weight loss to society because the monopoly will underproduce the product and they will charge at more expensive price but i would rather see uh, if they were trying to simulate the effect of monopolistic power creating problems, um, them have artificially increased prices. Uh, so, like, the the price would be extra high, but it only, like, uh, sell... But then the, the whoever's the owner of the dividend should just get more money, and then they should stimulate the economy with consumption, you know? And so... Yeah, I mean, like... Understanding the the interplay between economics and politics within the framework of Victoria 3 also kind of means divorcing yourself as much as you can from ideology, right? Like, the, the question at its core, whether or not Victoria 3 needs to be a perfect simulation of the 19th century or the long 19th century is kind of impossible to answer because it's simultaneously a game and a historical simulation that teaches people stuff. But I like edit broadly the investment pool malice is just dumb. Like it, it, the game played fine before, and I imagine that they probably included these things as changes to try to, as you said, slow the the player down. But like, just make AI behaviors better, right? The, there's a lot of things that you can do to make AI behaviors better in a way that makes it so you don't have to nerf the player. You're just just build a better world. This is perhaps, like, a deeper philosophical question that's, like, related to this, but would you be okay with them dropping their emphasis entirely on the pop and the population, which is a, the brunt of the calculations that are done in the game, uh, in order to, like, improve other sorts of performance, and instead they pay more attention to uh, the economic systems and the politics and less to the individual pops? I think largely, yes. I think that largely pops are kind of overemphasized by people right now. That, like, a lot of the questions that you see on, on Reddit are about, you know, trying to increase standard of living by decreasing prices. And oh, that's I hate that. not good. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> like, and, and that's that's unfortunate that that's one of those ideas that exists in the, uh, the cultural milieu of, of Victoria 3 players. But it's... 
that that's not that's not good, right? You, you need to train your brain to think about the economics of the world that you're building a little more completely and a little more complexly. And so I don't have any issue with with Paradox building systems that are inherently complex. It just means that the performance is going to be bad. And I don't it could be that yeah. that pops are a contributing factor to that, but I haven't dug around in that part of the code enough to to say for sure. I, I, but yeah, like migration I'm not a code was digger. definitely a big problem. It, migration was well, a huge problem. But like my, that was that was migration why it was so slow. Like a problem when you create all these separate categories for different pops. That's like what makes it a problem. Yeah. If it was just yeah. uh, a single calculation for like, if you create, if you make the populations more abstractions and less like exactly one pop of this culture this religion this x uh this like career this interest group uh like voting system like uh then it's less calculations on like the migration and all this stuff and it's like is the pop like the the centrally important thing um and maybe it is i i like I, to some extent i think it's like the heart of the game but like the the sol thing you brought up is like Every, like, once a month, there's someone who posts, like, Command Economy is the best. I switched to Command Economy. Uh, now the prices of everything are super low. And, uh, you know, SOL is, like, 18 or 20, and it's so high. And it's like, uh, your, com your economy is depressed. <laughs> right. The, <laughs> the, the prices are all low. You're not... I think, I think broadly, uh, there are just an enormous number of misunderstandings in Victoria 3, which is, like... I don't know about I don't know about you, but like the reason that I I make content is to try to help people understand the games that I'm playing a little better. Um, it even if it means like spending a lot of time talking about the complex interplay between things, and so I don't I don't know like I think that if they wanted to make pops less important, they certainly could, but I like. I think that they should just focus on where the performance problems are, which they probably have a better idea of, and then yeah. try to adjust things from there. Because because okay. the performance is definitely like the biggest problem when it comes to their ability to do things that are that are real, right? To create verisimilitude in the mid to late game, because like you just can't get there. They, <laughs> in, I, th in I think, eighteen eighty, like you can't run your, the game anymore. I think they have to do something which is really tough, which is they have to make the Clausewitz engine multi-thread. Yeah, and, and I think it doesn't. And, and <laughs> that's I, I like that. uh, <laughs> that's not that's beyond that's not outside my purview. But yeah, uh, <laughs> the I like at some point they they have to do that if they want to do something like this, and um, that's. Uh, yeah, like I, it's tough. The there was a few questions we got from users. Why don't I read you the exact question? Uh, so from Xander zero uh, seventeen, uh, what I'm most interest sick in is how you handle diplomatic plays. It always seems like there's a chance for random great powers to butt in no matter what. And my answer to that is I pit tear my hair out. But oh no, that's depending on the great power in question. That's awesome, right? Getting getting a, a free bite at war reps off of France is just like all, almost always good. You do need to have the ability to you know prevent them from naval invading your capital, mm -hmm. but like sometimes the random great powers butting in is a positive thing. You just have to be prepared for it, and and I think that it this is one of these things that is kind of a I think a reaction from paradox. Do you, did you watch any of the stuff that was coming out like before the game, like the pre-release videos? I think I consumed all of it, but I don't recall much of it. So there was one video where I think it was Jumbo Pixel, but I'm not 100% sure, but somebody took thumbnails. Brazil and just like conquered a bunch of South America without necessarily provoking the interaction, like intervention from great powers. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who watched that video left comments about like how this was super bad and the, the great powers should intervene, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I, I mean, like that's not the way that diplomatic plays operated in the 19th century anyway. Like the great powers shouldn't be butting in to, to prevent people from growing. They should be spending their time and effort on growing themselves. And that's one of those things that I I think it looks like 1.4 and 1.5 are going to adjust. Like there's in the the patch for, rather in the dev diary 91, 
Paradox specifically hi highlighted that they're going to redo imperialist AI thinking in a way that makes the AI behave a lot more rationally, yeah. a lot a lot more flavorfully, I think. And, it, and that is going to focus on they're only going to intervene if they want to conquer those territories themselves, right? I, and and it, that's, I think, good, right? The UK shouldn't be spending 12 months fighting a no-name country in Southeast Asia. To be they fair, 1.3 is also way else. less aggressive than 1.2. Yeah, 1.2 um, yeah, is a lot less aggressive. 1.2 was absolutely psychotic. Um, I remember, like, my I had a Spain run where they joined, li uh, the UK joined literally every play I made. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that sounds like it would be quite the, the hair pull, but that's it, still, that's still war reps. It's I before mean, I knew that, how to triple land. And I kept trying to land them, like, normally. It's before I understood oh. how the triple landing worked. You don't have to, I mean, like, you can, you can cheese stuff, but, like, you don't have to, I guess... All, uh, you all could take just with war reps. Three yeah. is kind of AI cheese right now. But yeah, if you're just taking war reps, like you do not need to be able to triple land. You can just naval invade yeah. anywhere. I was trying to like take, break apart Scotland and this sort of stuff, and so I just yeah. I had a bunch. I had like four white piece wars uh, in that run. Um, but yeah, I mean, like uh, it's a lot of it's cheese. Have you watched any? Uh, okay, so like we didn't talk about this beforehand, but have you? watched any of the like 3v 3v3 stuff that i've been doing uh no or have but you heard i imagine about that? i i have heard about it i imagine that those are are pretty wild because of other humans intervening and everything but yeah. like do you guys have rules to to prevent a like humans no, from there's, cheesing each other there's no anti cheat okay so the the rules the only anti-cheese rules are just because of performance issues so people can like triple land each other they can quad land so when the wars break out uh like uh the uk gets landed by 18 armies at once for example that yep that sounds <laughs> that sounds realistic great i mean that, that seems like one of those things that there there are mechanical problems inside of victoria 3 and you can choose to exploit them or not um i think that generally triple landing is one of those things that i would encourage people to not do because you don't have to do that you can take any yeah. power and make them the number one great power by just like understanding the mechanics and playing well to, to be fair if there's you want to cheese you can there's but, a threshold like, where landing the uk becomes impossible without multi-landing like when they have over 200 battalions defending and, yeah but or, like, well i guess you could get on tanks before them and maybe you can land 120 like if you have the popular commander um, you can just build a big navy, though. I, I like the the AI no, doesn't but do a particularly even, good job of, if you, of keeping even if their... you 120 navy and 120 army in, they'll still beat you. Is what I'm saying. If, yeah, yeah, but it, it depends on where you're you're naval invading and like or what home country you're aiming for. Yeah, yeah if you're need to like blow them up in one war. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can still get there without without all that stuff, though. Like, yeah, I, I've naval invaded. UK more times than I can count, and me, almost never too, with, with double or triples. Usually it's triples. Uh, if you're, you can land like the upper portion, and then you can also like defend a front somewhere else if they and so they'll commit troops, and you just defend it, yeah. and you like land it. There's like, um, uh, just to like briefly talk about three v three v three more, uh, like without. So, if the scoring format is entirely based on GDP growth, both percentage and nominal, which countries do you think would be best? Like, what top? What would be your top four countries or something like this? So, I it, it does depend kind of on what the overall rule set are going to be like and what the player count is going to be like, right? Uh, the pe meta people on that can sort do. Of thing. Just to, like, briefly, people can do whatever they want, so this means all unrecognized powers will, like, get recognized day one because you'll dow on your allies for recognition. Yeah. Um, you can also regime change your allies. Uh, you can use your allies to reset infamy, so you could accrue, like, 50 infamy and then have someone cut down to size and then capitulate to them before enforcing your 50 infamy war. And so, like, these are examples... I mean, un under those circumstances, I would probably put France as being the number one country for growth just because they start so strong and so 
like they they start very very powerful in terms of their their build up locally so it, it's probably a lot harder to naval invade france than it is to naval invade the uk just because if you successfully naval invade the uk you're already on their capital whereas you have to march into ile de france and UK, there are a lot of troops there. So you can move your capital. That's like a common meta thing. But UK doesn't have a single province with yeah, English culture that's not coastal. Like that. <laughs> yep. UK, UK looks like they would be pretty dangerous to try to play unless you have a, a good agreement with people. I, it, it also looks like it would probably be dependent on what team format you're working with. Right? With 3v3-3, I... I think honestly, it would be a lot more fun to have people play with with mid tier or lower tier powers. Like, it, it great power stuff is pretty. I, it's not random, but it, there's a lot of of variability, right? The, like if you if you get uh if you get really really screwed in terms of just like one diplomatic play not going well as a larger power, then that that can just kind of be the end of your growth. The, the problem with um, playing as small powers, because this has come up before, is uh, you introduce a huge level of variance with how the AI GPs are going to behave towards the players. I mean, that's true, but the AI GPs, like, if, you're, if you know what you're doing, shouldn't be that scary. No, but the They're, they are the AI GP, that's for Well, sure. but the, the, if you can sway, if you a player dow another player and then you can sway more AI GPs against them it makes a substantive difference yeah yeah is, for sure like I, I think my thing i think multiplayer victoria 3 right now is probably one of those things that is never going to take off this is a chicken and egg problem paradox interactive largely does not spend a lot of time developing multiplayer stuff for their games cuz largely multiplayer doesn't do particularly well but, of course, if they don't spend effort developing multiplayer, then um, people aren't going to play it. So, like, I did a lot of Battletech, uh, the, the HBS game that they worked with, with Paradox. I did a lot of Battletech uh, multiplayer back in the day. But, like, their netcode just kind of fell apart, and then the multiplayer group died. And I, I feel like that's probably one of the, the things that's going to hang over a lot of Paradox interactive games, including Victoria 3. Like, they're, they're not... I don't think they're ever going to balance it for for multiplayer. Have you played Divergences? I haven't played Divergences. That's one of the mods that that I one of one of my folks did recommend it, but uh, uh, I I haven't checked it out it's yet. It's balanced for multiplayer and like every with the like one or two exceptions, like every country is kind of like a middling power and everyone's just medium size. Um, I think it's much better balanced for multiplayer. Uh, and yeah. like, uh, if I were to make a competitive three v three v, like if I was just trying to make it as competitive as possible and as like balanced as possible, uh, divergences might be the way to go. Um, yeah. But the the three v three v three is supposed to be balanced by the fact that um, if one team pulls ahead, uh, the other two teams dogpile them. Yeah. So. Although then you're creating a, a game where it comes down to diplomacy as well as everything else. Which yeah, I diplomacy guess is okay. a huge portion of it. Yeah, the, yeah. your like it's not just your ability to click build construction center. Yeah, yeah, it's your ability <laughs> to manipulate the other humans into doing what exactly. Is useful for like you. If, if you can convince one team that the other team's the problem when you're the problem, then you win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the but that's like. It's it's I think it's a lot more interesting than single player. I wish there was like a lot of things that were um, improved for like that sort of thing. Like the the double the like the triple landings are like super obnoxious. But if you took away triple landings, like there'd be other things. I wish navy was like actually important. It's not. Um... Oh, I disagree entirely. I think navy is one of the most important things in the game, at least initially. But like, I, navy is I navy mean, gets if, you interests. If you're if you're hyper PvPing though, like you can shift around interests, oh, yeah. right? You and you'd rather interests, have construction but... centers than uh, like dock and naval yards. It. I mean, it can. It kind of depends on what you're doing because construction sectors are. You know, that that's the ultimate goal, right? How do you get as many construction yeah. sectors as quickly as possible? But. Naval yards 
give you floating interests, which then can translate into permanent interests by taking control of things like treaty ports from small territories and therefore give you access to more trade partners. And there's just like an outrageous amount of territory in the game at, at game start that has things that you can trade productively with. So you can make an outrageous amount of money through trade and then by using, you know, free trade and laissez-faire have a gigantic construction pool sector and you don't need like an enormous fleet in order to to start that growth like if yeah. for basically any of the small to medium sized power you just build up to a size 12 navy I, right away i mean so you can just start growing i think useless isn't necessarily the right word in like the context of like it but it's like i think it the money's better spelled, spent on barracks or construction centers like pretty overwhelmingly um Although, I guess I haven't seen many players delete down their navies. I think UK, you'd maybe even want to delete down your navy at game start, but... Um, I, I think that this context is also quite a bit different than, like, single player or whatever. Um, yeah, like, I imagine in multiplayer, probably trade is a lot less useful, but, like, in single player trade... It is, is you get embargoed. So, so good. <laughs> you get embargoed like, so, by so, every so, big so trade good. partner. Well, not even just big trade partners, right? Like if you're if you're creating a small trade link, there's a, just look at the map in 1836. There's an, an outrageous number of countries that have tons and tons of dyes and literally zero purchase demand for it because they don't have yeah. the the technology necessary to even use dyes in anything. And so if you set up interests in those areas, you're not talking about trading with great powers. You're talking about trading with mid-sized or smaller tier powers, and you can get enormous amounts of dies get your your industries up and rolling keep them profitable but it doesn't just stop with dies right like because of the goods that are produced by subsistence farms the goods that are generally available in the world economy you can understand are going to be beneficial towards an industrializing power right there's going to be a lot of fabric floating around because that's going to be produced a lot by subsistence farms there's going to be a lot of grain producing because of subsistence farms and so you can kind of specialize your economy to take advantage of all the overages that are going to exist in the world through trade and that requires having access to to floatable interests it depends on how big you are right like yeah the UK almost certainly can delete ships, but I think basically anybody who can afford to have at least one floating interest, which is you have to have 10 flotillas to get there, and you yeah. don't want them to die and then lose them, so I would generally I, recommend more than that. I, I um, generally agree, like, you'd want, like, one extra interest and at least 10 ships, but... I, I, and then I think after it, that you just you cruise and get dominions in single player like to mainly it kind of depends because like the yeah if the you're trying to hit a prestige thing is a little mark it depends it depends also. on how how like are you trying to world conquest and how quickly you are because you can also save a giant chunk of infamy by turning someone to, into a protector at first and then doing dominion puppet. Right. Like, I, it looks like they've nerfed it from minus 90 to minus 75 percent but that's still like a gigantic chunk of infamy you don't have to spend to dominion or puppet brazil yeah although dominion in brazil day one's pretty strong it's it is pretty strong but like you brazil is is on that list mexico's on that yeah, list the, japan's the, on that the list problem with brazil is they like, often gain so much pop that like uh even with the discount like it's almost as expensive as the day one dominion by the time you can protector at them, and then well, protector it is is usually pretty pretty floating. Like it's like between five and nine for almost everything. No, yeah, but the by the time that they, they often like double their pop by the time you can dominion them after protectorating them, right? Yeah, and but it's the, it depends on what you're trying based to do. Pop. Yeah, I, usually like I try and stay under twenty five infamy. It depends on what you're trying to do, like. 20, yeah, 25 infamy is a, an important breakpoint in terms of AI behaviors. Same with 50, same with 75, same with 100. And so understanding the context of like, what does this infamy get me and what do I need right now is generally going to create a, a stronger empire than just having fixed heuristics yeah. all of the time. One right? of, one of 75 or 50 is not a breakpoint. I forget which one, but only um, one of them it, has a, a threshold. So it, all of them have thresholds in regards to radicals from conquests. 
Some of them have... Uh, 50 doesn't have an influence on most AI behaviors, okay. but it will increase the likelihood that like nations that are inclined to be hostile to you will start intervening in, in conflicts more, ag- more aggressively. Um, and I think that they can start doing embargoes at 75 if they're if they're like classified as a certain a certain AI type. Well, any I gotta, I gotta dig back you. through that code again. Yeah, I haven't. I I haven't looked. I'm not a a code looker. Sometimes some of my viewers are like, the code says this, and I'm like, oh, I see. Yeah, it's important. Like the the code is, I think, the thing that you learn the most from, like that and debug, because it lets you test stuff and see what what assumptions you have are incorrect. It's it's a it's a good way to learn. I just think real hard, to be honest. But I should probably look through the code more. You you probably <laughs> should. I think you'd get a lot from it. There's there's a lot of really interesting things in there. Like broadly, I think people are underestimating radicals. Like generally, if your goal is to institute cooperative ownership, then you need to get your trade unions and intelligentsia angry at you. Because that's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to spawn people who are actually going to be open to that, right? Because that makes sense, right? If you want people to overthrow the the liberal democratic regime that you have in control of the country, you need them to be mad. Yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna just default towards that. And so the AI, look, not just the AI, but the, like the way that IG leadership is spawned actually does reference whether or not people are angry the trade or not. unions like malice their minus five thing is so fucking bad yeah it's pretty bad but like sometimes it's about short-term sacrifices for long-term power and having access to the ability to to make people angry initially so that way they become you know not capital r radicals like the the yeah, yeah. Robespierre characters but radicals helps you push through really really big changes and it's that's again this is like one of these things that the the subreddit just has a limited understanding of i i mean it's understandable like the the game is complex and there are a lot of interconnected systems yeah i mean the there's a lot of hot and weird takes on there but like a lot of it is just like you intuitive a lot of the stuff that's wrong is people just intuitively, like, uh, are thinking... They're thinking intuitively about how the world should work, and then they, like, uh, somehow infer that in the game, and then their inference is wrong. Like, yeah. uh, for the most part, the line always goes up. Like, no matter yeah. what you do, the economy's gonna improve. And so someone thinks that what they're doing is correct, because the economy's improving, and it's like, no, 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 no. It's about making the line go up as fast as possible, not, uh, did the line go up, yes or no. Yeah, I mean, the, the the short and sweet of it is the best way to make the line go up as fast as possible is to still just, like, conquer everything as quickly as you can, because that's the thing that makes yeah, the line go I up mean, a lot. Um, that but, is, I wish uh, the game wasn't like that, but that's, that, yeah. yeah. The, the, the best thing to do is start as France and day one transfer EIC, and then... Yep, uh, that's, been, that's been the meta since forever. And, uh, yeah, and, yeah. But that's, I don't know, that's uninteresting. The AI is just weak. Yeah, it like, is that is definitely uninteresting. Um, okay, so another question here uh, from Emotion665. People are always talking about big systems they want to add to VIC-3. I'd love to hear your opinions on the small things that could be changed that could have a big impact. So we talked about this a little bit b- before filming, um, but I did a video about adjusting the default construction sector AI. The way that it currently works is that there are a couple of different things that the AI will look towards, nominally GDP and POPs, and then there will be a little modifier based off of what laws they have. But there isn't a modifier for investment pool. And because of the other modifiers, the great powers and the large economies generally do a pretty good job of matching up their construction sector to their their IP just accidentally. But this means that there's like an entire class of nations, Portugal, Brazil, the Dutch East Indies, EIC, Japan, who just don't develop their construction sectors, even as they develop their investment pool into the tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. And that that feels that it feels wrong, right? 
capital in this sort of world isn't going to just sit around doing nothing. It's going to intentionally influence the behaviors of the government in a way that, that gives them the resources to spend that capital in order to develop more economic industries. And so including investment pool is one of these things that doesn't actually dramatically decrease performance because it doesn't change the behaviors of the great powers, but it creates a, a world where there's a lot more flow in the like 10th to 30th rank because those countries are actually gonna actively start growing their economy. They're gonna actively start building things, building real buildings and turning their pops from being basically pointless peasants to being productive, consumptive pops. And so I like I think that if you're going to make any sort of small changes, they should be small changes that are geared towards creating both more realism in the game while also not sacrificing performance and updating AI behaviors to actually reflect the new mechanics on the ground is, I think, the easiest way to do that. And yeah. uh, using using autonomous investment better is just like what they should do because the autonomous investment does a great job when it comes to developing the economy of the the GPS, and it sh more more countries should have that. Is there a like uh, game? So this is a AI behavior balance like uh, response, which I I think. I think this is like a way better response than like creating a new system uh, to improve stuff. Also, making Shing stop building infinite uh, administration, gov administrations, and then deleting them would also like be yeah. fantastic. Um, but uh, is there an answer to this question that you would have for introducing like an entirely new game system? Uh, you know, rather than uh, making the AI more intelligent, which like I again I, I think it's, your solution's better, but just like this uh, system's so answer to the question. Yeah, the, the small things, so I love your opinions on what small things could be changed that could have a big impact. And I, I do think that the small things in regards to AI behaviors are the things that are going to have the biggest impact. Because with any game, with any game in Victoria 3 in 1836, you do not have control over the world's economy. You'll, you'll get there, but you don't start that way. And so the behaviors of the AI are inherently going to have a much more meaningful impact on the overall development of the world than making adjustments to, to different mechanics, right? I think, I think the goal should be first and foremost to make sure that the game is playable from 1836 to 1936. I don't know if the game succeeds on that right now. Um, it, it doesn't for <laughs> my AMD Ryzen 5600. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. I, look, I haven't gotten I to... I look very desperately. Anytime I, I... Like, have you played through to 1936 on any of your... I haven't played your, through uh... to 1900 since Voice of the People. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like it's I'm awful. just sitting here on France and I'm like I have 30k construction but like uh, it's moving it takes, like molasses so I think I'm done here. I yeah, think, like I I've can't, recorded. Yeah. Do you record like roughly a do you how many years at a time do you record usually or do you just record based off? Oh of time? well, like um, it, now it's like based off of time. It used to be like three to five years, but like now it's like uh really early on it's like less years. Because uh, there's, like, much more going on, like, uh, in the early years in terms of, like, substantive things. And so every time I record, like, a little clip, I put it in and then I'm looking to have, like, 25 minutes or something like this. And so it's way less years early on and then later episodes are, like, way, tend to be more years. But it takes me way longer to record way the later longer. episodes. Because yeah, it like takes I, forever I generally to do aim for the years. Ten minutes or for ten years at a time, and it takes me like an hour to record the first couple of episodes, and You're then it takes like flying. five hours to record some of the later ones. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. I have to. So I have to stop and tell my viewers how good chop chops are. Like I gotta pause yeah. the game and be like lumber camps, and like I I could not do ten years in an hour. That's nuts. It. You can do it. Like it just depends on what your goals are. Again, for the campaign, like I, I think I can't it, pause and get that far. Like on speed five. Yeah, it, I'd oh, have to you, speed five and no pause whatsoever. Yeah, I think. It, it's doable. It's doable. I mean, I think my computer, not oh, like, not like a, I don't. I'm not saying a skill issue. I'm saying computer issue. I don't think I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so maybe skill I mean, issue like, too, but computer really issue. This isn't really an answer for the the small things to change that could have a big impact. Yeah, but like I would, 
I tend to take the 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 point of view that for me, I think that the way that the game models a lot of stuff right now is good at just depicting a certain interpretation of history. It's not necessarily perfect at, at describing history overall, right? Because history overall is one of these things that once you learn enough about, you realize that everything is unknowable and that doesn't make it like something you shouldn't be curious about, but it is unknowable. We don't really know why these these people made the decisions that they made, but you can create models that help you understand that. That's where historiography steps in. But I think that the game has taken a historiographical perspective. They are, they are leaning into economic determinism and historical materialism. And I think that's a, a perfectly reasonable direction for them to take Certainly things. The, but, like, their you're not performance, talking about Marx's like, materialism, are you? Or are you? I mean, they, they, yeah, they kind of are. The end like, of history type, like, progression of time towards the inevitable it's there. Per people's it's, revolution. It's, it's, it's there in the game. Like, I don't <laughs> this know is such a common. It. This is such a common like Reddit thing. Is like, are they like communists or not? I I think if the if the progress of history is predetermined, then maybe they are. But I I don't think that was necessarily the goal. I think the goal was as they there was an interview with Martin or um is that the guy somebody. with the beard and the glasses yeah the dude He's with the, the, the glasses guy, right? and you're saying yeah. that like they just they used they use this because it's easy to code as a game because they make games that's <laughs> this, such a good answer he's the econ uh, guy. he's like the econ consultant guy yeah uh it, that, it's not but that he, he, did, he seems like uh what i've seen him like on the stream he seems like a red-blooded capitalist like he does not seem like uh this like Marx had it right type guy, you know, um, or that's the impression I get, but it always comes up on Reddit where they're just like, uh, all the devs are just communists and it's like, I think anybody who is yeah. inherently getting angry about the politics of Victoria three is dumb. <laughs> it's, it's like, that's, that's kind of what I think, but also to be generous to these people on Reddit, some people just type really ang way angrily, more angrily than they are. Like, they're over there yeah. chilling, but just the tone of how they type, it just, they sound like a psychopath. But they're just like, yeah. oh, I'm having my cup of coffee and being like, why are these guys fucking communists? I don't Who knows? I'm just gonna finish my coffee now. It's like, they're just chilling. Like, they're, they're definitely, there are definitely things that I, I think, like, what, do you, what would you change in terms of small things that would make a big impact? Oh, I, this is such a, a, a tough, I guess, like, I didn't even think about the, my answer to this question. Rookie mistake for a creator. But, like, uh, I think that, uh, for me, the diplomatic plays are the most psych psychotic thing. But that's not a small thing. Like, that's a big yeah. thing to fix. Well, um, no, that's that's a small thing to change. Like, they, they've they've had the AI be more I, I can make a list of 20 items with my problems with, like, diplo plays, though. Like, it's not, yeah. just, it's not just the level of aggressiveness. It's that it's, like, not really simulating anything. It's just, like, a lagging DAO that's, yeah, like, weird. Yeah, it's a lagging DAO. Uh, and, and it doesn't feel like a diplomatic play and a jockeying and, like, some sort of subterfuge and, like, complex, nuanced thing. It just feels like a delayed DAO. Uh, and yeah. so, like... Um, I, yeah. I, I would want to change a system, uh, I would want, actually, what I would want to do, I think this is relatively small, uh, actually, no, it's not small. I, I, I can't think of a small system that would create a huge change, to be honest. I just, I can't. I, I can think, just think of big changes. I think changes. anything, anything that changes AI behavior, yeah, depending I, I, on how meaningful the changes could actually be pretty easy I, I, for Paradox to fix and produce huge outcomes. I, the, I I think you're I think you're correct. I can think of a lot of big systems that like I think yeah. would be good. Like I think that like uh, things uh, I think that there should be like in addition to like laws, there should be an entire another section for cultures, and that these cultures could give you comparative advantage in economics. And I also think news news should be a good, and it should be like influenced by your. Uh, like freedom of speech laws and like your pops consume it and then it has like a cascading effect so like uh, it improves like tech but not just in like improving tech but like also like uh, allows you to siphon off comparative advantage or like so for example if uh, if let's say France
Lance is really good at steelworking for whatever modifiers that are, are currently not existed. Uh, if you have a lot of newspapers, you can siphon off some of their comparative advantage as you like learn some of their technology because you have a free and open society. But then also you like it's harder for you to control your society. But this I think is that's probably what like the, so yeah like this you're describing taking the mechanics that currently exist and making them more granular which isn't yeah. necessarily a bad thing but again it's one of those things that the more that we do that the worse performance becomes and the yeah. game does need to run and better i i, I would i would sacrifice the pops to me like it's not meaningful that i can look at like oh i have like uh a sunni laborer who's uh part of this interest group specifically like the i don't need uh i would be okay with like uh an abstraction does, that doesn't track all of these pops individually, but instead tracks, like, pies, you know, where I yeah. have X percentage Sunni, and it doesn't track the individual pop that is Sunni and trade unions and X and, like, this sort of thing, but just tracks the number of Sunnis and the number of trade unions and, like, this sort of thing, um, which, like, is, it, it, like, the the under the heart of the game is not this, but, uh, right, because... But the heart like, of the game is the interplay between money and power. I think I think that's what Victoria Three is really about at its core. I think it's about jobs, but well, jobs the individual pops and money jobs. and power. Yeah, but the but the, the yeah, I mean the, that determines like who gets the money. Yeah, and, from a mechanical standpoint, like the thing that determines the society that you that you have, the society you have is not solely produced by your capital but it's informed by your capital because the capital is going to have certain jobs associated with it and certain money going to the people who have those jobs but that yeah. that money itself because of the way clout works money is power right yeah and that's and that because money is power that's associated with specific interest groups and specific leaders and those leaders in turn produce specific ideologies money is power is i think the the core determining factor I, of, I, of Victoria's three game design. And I, I guess it's a slightly different wrong. frame because the, like I, I'm thinking like the pops and the jobs determine the money. And the, like, I agree with you that money's the power, but like the, uh, the underlying mechanisms are tracking like the pops and are like, it's just, well, like almost all the calculation Wait. is done for the pops. Yeah, almost all the calc, calc is done for the pops, but like that's and not, not the money strictly well, necessary. It kind of the money. It it depends on on the direction that they're going, but like giving that that collection, I think is good. That connection, it, it's it's a it's a framework that they can work off of. Yeah, I mean, I I think that my interpretation of Victoria U uh, Victoria Two UI, which. To be fair, it's been a while since I played that game. Was it seemed entirely focused on pops as well? Uh, yeah. But I am. That's I'm not a Victoria too. Like, that's not. I the yeah. last time I played that game was when House Divided came out. I have enough hours in that game and no DLC to just. I probably was just very confused the entire time I was playing. It's like forty <laughs> hours. Yeah. I'm. I my recollection was I felt like I couldn't do anything. <laughs> And I was like, there's no player agency, which is another problem because like, as you, as you better simulate an economy, uh, in terms of like the player will have less and less agency. Like the ruler of any sort of country actually has almost no agency in terms of how the economy like, uh, shakes out. Like, I mean, you in Victoria, Victoria two is very different. I think if you want to have a, a conversation about Victoria two, then I, I'm not I, equipped I'm bringing yeah, a knife to. I'm bringing not even a knife to that gunfight. Like it, I don't know Victoria Two at all. Victoria Two is is an entirely different beast. Like a lot of the structures that they built in Victoria Two produced their own sort of problems. I don't. Again, I don't think a lot of these decisions were made from an ideological standpoint. I think they were just trying to make a good game that modeled things in a way that was interesting and at least on flavor. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, Victoria 2, 
had a lot of issues with like liquidity crises and just oh money. yeah there's like it was, a finite money supply for the entire game yeah, it was right a finite money supply. <laughs> yeah. yeah it is it was realistic i guess but no it i don't think that, bad results uh i i've heard descriptions of what the finite money supply does and they don't they sound anything but realistic uh it it's not the the finite money supply itself produces realistic things it's that or is is itself realistic it's that it produces realistic behaviors for okay some yeah. countries for some amount of time but unfortunately it ends up with like liquidity traps almost every single time where by the end of the game it, at least it's realistic in that by the end of the game there's usually a great depression that's realistic. That is, a re I mean, like, there's not boom and bust cycles in Victoria 3, which is, like, a running no. complaint. Um, yeah. It's just the line goes up, and they're, or, up, yeah, everything is reversed. Uh, but, like, yeah, like, I, in terms of gameplay, like, the, one of the problems is, and I guess we can actually talk about this now, the companies, which they're introducing to try and kind of, uh, you know, uh, flesh this out and make this better. But one of the problems is fundamentally, like, the gameplay patterns are exactly the same every single run. Even, the like, the places you conquer are the same. Uh, after the very beginning, your economy looks exactly the same, no matter, like, what country you're playing. And it's just this one homogenous, it's the same thing. And, um, you know, going through the subreddit, it's interesting, because, like, uh, you can tell how many hours, like, someone has in the game by how uh, much, how different they think that one country is from another. Uh, you, and you have, like, this subset of people who are like, yeah, dude, all of the countries are the same, and you're like, that guy has a lot of hours, and then the people who are like, yeah. what do I do on this country? I know this country, this other country, but I don't know, I know how to play this, I know how to play Persia, but I don't know if I can play Egypt, and it's like, nope, they're the same. The first, the first decade or so, at least, for, for basically every country is going to be pretty different, because, just because the situation is, is so distinct in 1836, like, before you unpause, on January 1st, 1836, the situation in Sardinia, Piedmont, is vastly different than the situation in the Bas Congo. Yeah. Like, the, the way you play those openings is very, very different. By the time you get to, like, the 1880s, you should be a great yeah. power with basically everybody. You should probably be number one unless you started as, like, Sakim. Um, but how you get there does it it is contextual right it's Sikkim a little bit. has to play its opening pretty differently just because of the diplomatic situation they find themselves in it, the, it, it's a little bit different but it's nothing like european or Versalis in terms of differences or uh hoey i mean when was the last time you played with a, a, one, a one province mine in victoria three uh probably not too long ago my chat or my viewership loves torturing me. I'm trying to think. Yeah, who, I guess who, it was a while ago, one? huh? Yeah. I I mean I've done Give Sakota Conquers Africa. I've 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 definitely I, played one province miners. Uh, I'm just. I did um, Montenegro into Yugoslavia, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, I I did Krakow um, into Poland, Lithuania. Yeah, Krakow into Poland, Lithuania yeah. is a good one. But like, I don't know about games, Krakow but... into Poland, Lithuania, right? You so had to play that a little differently, like the. Yeah, I, but I think I think the people who really play Victoria Three a lot are the people who understand that yes, there are things that you go towards, but also context is super important. And unfortunately, the game is really complicated, and therefore, creating a soundbite is like not useful when it comes to understanding the complexities of the systems. I, I agree. The, the, I agree with that. There's a lot of stuff in the game. There's a lot of stuff in the game. But it's and I, I think you can make a flow chart. Either, is, uh, I think you could make a flowchart like of if thens that would be a really complicated flowchart, but and then use it for every country, and it would like yeah. play the game perfectly. Like the the core, I think, of make productive stuff. Yeah, and and, and the same stuff is productive around in your economy is generally the way to go. The the the, sa the same stuff is productive though for like every country to like a similar degree, but like. So yeah, logging but, camps are insane, but, like, Egypt, you don't actually... You have, like, seven logging camps you can build the entire country. Uh, yeah, but again, I, I, like, I think... I don't know how much you're using trade, but trade, at least in single player, is outrageously important and yeah, yeah. does influence, like, the direction of the development of your economy just because yes. of how powerful free trade and laissez-faire is together. 
Like you, that's a lot of that's a lot of investment pool that you got access to really really quickly. Yeah, but like you, but you also usually use it the same way to uh, make it so your economy is not producing agricultural goods. Oh no! You, you just get anything that's high productivity. It doesn't matter what it is. Oh, I like, disagree. Just, you do as do as much trade as possible because of the way because of the way trade works. If you're on free trade, you're not in terms of like pop productivity on your investment pool you're not going to get better than a, a productive like several hundred productivity trade center running with a hundred thousand pops i mean like the, those those produce enormous enormous amounts of investment pool i think i disagree with you don't to some cost extent. a lot in terms of investment because you uh you can short term get like the gains but then it uh influences your construction queue in a way that you might not like like if you export then build cotton, more well, if you export cotton, if you export cotton, it's going to result in your your queue building more of it, and like uh, it's not very efficient. Like, uh, but unless you're, I guess you could rush pump jacks on top of that. But like, if you're exporting cotton, this will cause more cotton to be built, and then like the landowners contribute ten percent to the IPT, and the industrialists twenty percent, and the industrialists are juiced uh, when the landowners are probably not in a given context. And so I think like exporting agricultural stuff is a mistake. I it, I think it depends again on on what your goals are. But by exporting things, you're getting you're not just getting money for the the yeah. You're also making people, it more right? profitable. You're no no no. You're 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 getting tons and tons and tons of money in the trade center because if you're yeah. if you're selling like if say you have tea right and you export tea to a country mm -hmm. and then you get money. That money is not just going to the aristocrats, the owners of the tea plantations. It's also going to the people who own the trade center. I, and because yeah, of yes. because of the, the way that the price commodity difference works, you get a crap ton of money from, from trade. And then, yes, the aristocrats get a little bit of extra stuff, and it does influence the, the outcome of your construction pool a little bit. But, like, that, that's, that doesn't matter. Like, just build more stuff build more stuff build productive stuff do things that are productive but you're you're, the, you're changing the, the stuff to be uh, productive in a particular way like you're making the cotton more productive you're making the cotton slightly more productive but the larger your economy grows the less any individual trade route matters right like the more yeah. individual and that's sort of where like to pull it back to the investment pool malice that that's sort of where that rears its ugly head that at a certain point because of the artificial constructs that the the game works with you do kind of have to care about that efficiency once you get huge but like once you're huge then it well, also doesn't matter i mean i i so if the, in the context of like once your gdp's passed like 800 million like maybe you want to like uh start exporting agriculture like i still uh I'm not of that position, but, like, it's closer. But I, I, I think early on you just, like, don't want to do it. Like, even if it's productive because it's a temporary thing. Because eventually, like, you'll hit an equilibrium where it's not that profitable. The root's not that big. And you just have, like, more cotton than you would, like, uh, yeah, otherwise you, have. Like, you have to, in you short have to... term, it's, like, it's good. If you if you babysit but, it super hard, uh, then, like, it's probably optimal. But... I, I think you're also overlooking the fact that for most economies, if you know what you're doing, just like building things in the first decade or so, you're gonna find that most of the routes that are profitable are the things that support the economies that the industries that you're actually building anyway. Yeah, yeah that's again also because true. there's just like a massive overage of agricultural basic raw goods in the world because of the things produced by subsistence farms. You probably yeah. shouldn't be able to set up a and lot of the way productive the exports on stuff. agricultural buildings anyway. That's true. Right? Like you shouldn't. That shouldn't be something that you're regularly able to support. And so, if you if you end up with a position where twenty percent of your trade routes end up giving a little more money to aristocrats, but eighty percent of them don't, and the overwhelming majority of this is just high productivity generating extra money through dividends through the trade centers for you it like i think that it largely doesn't matter that much because eventually your industrialists will just get so rich that like the aristocrats don't matter yeah i mean i i i understand what you're saying i, I think we're this is one where we're not gonna see eye to eye on though 
in regard. I mean, probably not. Just because but I think I, you, I think it just depends on like how much you interact you would, with trade. You would rather have the dividends be uh, capitalist owned dividends uh, than I would just rather, owned dividends. I would rather have a hundred k in in extra IP than eighty k, and I don't really care where it comes from. Like the more that I have, the better. The more that I as the player get access to, right. the better. I, I think and and where it comes from, it does. That's that's yeah. a problem for somebody else. I, I agree. I'd rather have more IP. Uh, so I guess it's more of an empirical question. Uh, so, yeah. but, the, but like because of the because of the way that trade works, you you do get a lot of extra money in terms of IP by just yeah, chasing high. As long as you're not on mercantilism. Yeah, well, don't be like. Just, no, yeah, I, I'm corn just, laws is right there. Just go to. Free I'm just, trade I'm just uh, offering like the context for like the viewer who might not be aware that like the ownership yeah. is different on mercantilism than it is on the other ones. Viewer at home, don't don't run anything other than free trade until you're ready to like move past capital. Because there, one of the things that inter that's interesting in Victoria Three is that capital is like insanely, insanely important at the beginning of the game and then like it slows down in terms of its importance on your natural growth curve because eventually you start needing just raw resources and population more than capital because eventually you're just because again because of the ip slowdown but also because of the the way that economies grow in victoria 3 and the dramatic lack of raw resources in the world you you you're gonna care less and less and less about yeah. having access to IP, and that's where cooperative ownership kind well, of steps. Capital in. builds buildings, and buildings are good capital because they're buildings, profitable. Like, and when they're not profitable, then capital's not very good anymore. Yeah, exactly. When, once they stop being as profitable, then capital isn't as good. And then anymore. resources but make like them profitable. Like at the beginning of the game, <laughs> capital is all that matters, and and free trade is way more capital. Don't worry about tariffs. So, tariffs are dumb. Tariffs are dumb. You just like uh, you just don't want to tariff anything. Uh, but yeah, just like get into corn laws immediately and then kill stuff. We do have a okay. So let's talk about corn laws because I actually don't use corn laws anymore uh, because I want to build much less agriculture. So it's much from like kind of the same sort of uh, philosophy that you want to have capitalist owned over landowner owned. But I know you're still doing corn laws uh, up to a certain point. Like you won't do corn laws on China because uh, they're just too big. Um, it's not worth it. Yeah, Unless you cheese it, it's not worth it's, it. Uh, I'm, I'm generally of the opinion that now it's just kind of too slow, and you just kind of... Uh, you go pro-army uh, and colonialism before your economic laws, and by then you can pass it without corn laws, and so I just don't um, go corn laws anymore. There's probably some... If the country is sufficiently small, I'll go corn laws, but they have to be real small. Uh, you but can I, get corn laws in, like, the first five years with most nations. Uh, but it requires you doing stuff like uh, building out cattle, no? Yeah, it requires you build out cattle and wood. Yeah. Wood is, wood is like, the thing that you really want to build out more than everything else. I agree um, with that. And, and that is really, really great in terms of... Because, like, really what you want to what you want to build are uh, things that cost 150 construction points. Because that's the way to, to, generally speaking, maximize the employability of peasants and therefore cause your price of grain to go up and yep. then cause you know a, a starvation scare but like it's not even that hard to get good value out of cattle because you get fabric which is a critical a critical part of your overall economy right yeah you get meat which is depending on on how happy you are doing trade meat is a really 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 easy way to to get tons of money out of a, a treaty port because you can get so much of it for so so little in terms of a construction point investment and so yep. like virtually everybody outside of like the uh, really 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 huge really 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 backwards countries can activate corn laws with just a little bit of construction in like the first five years the, the ten for the, the larger almost ones. all the agriculture on a like uh increasing your gdp basis is like extraordinarily efficient per construction uh, but they're not very efficient per construction on uh, putting money into the investment pool. Um, no, but they're it's but, it's but but they employ yeah. peasants, and then the peasants aren't having the consumption malice, so it immediately creates a much 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 larger consumer like goods base in your yeah. country. Uh, yeah, because because yeah. like peasants only consume ten percent of the normal goods that that usual pops would because of the way subsistence operates. 
And so the fewer peasants, that, that's really the, the core of why industrialization is strong. You just don't want any peasants in your, in your world. Right. Don't, no peasants. Peasants are bad. Peasants are up there with aristocrats. Wait, so you're, you're saying that peasants consume less per wealth? Yeah. yeah. They consume way less per wealth. How exactly does this mechanic work? They just consume 10% of what they're supposed to. Per wealth? interesting yeah i was unaware they, of this like not like the total goods is they, there a tool they tip consume in here in uh, there yeah, for that? yeah okay. there's a tool tip in there um sometimes it isn't is it on the correctly, unfortunately but yeah that it's in tra- there when they're on tracks. subsistence farms when the, when peasants are on con- subsistence farms they they consume almost nothing in terms of real goods and so you just want to yeah they don't drive peasants. up prices they don't drive up prices because they don't consume goods. Because like most, and they're they're functionally de-economized, right? Because most of the yeah. most of their income comes in the form of subsistence, which is non-taxable, and most of their consumption also comes in the form of that subsistence because they're not consuming goods; right. they're consuming their own wealth. And so what they'll do is basically just be pseudo unemployed. And so your goal, if your goal is to make line go up, is to just get as get rid of as many peasants as quickly as possible. And industrialization is like the best long term route to, towards that. Yeah. But because of how quickly you can activate corn laws with like virtually everybody except for Qing, and I think because Japan Probably has Japan the too. yeah Japan can do it. Japan can do it. I've done it, but it's not worth it because you want to weaken the landowners like very aggressively as japan yeah because like you you want to you want to get komei on the th- like in as soon there's as you a, can. there's also other ways now to that cheese Ninko a market liberal there. but especially yeah, if, you, if you're willing to, to if you're willing it. to save scum you can get one in three years with almost any country but um yeah but that's how much do you value your time in sanity sure and, yeah <laughs> yeah and so like that's like that's a separate discussion but i i that's haven't a been going uh, yeah i mean like uh but I haven't been well, growing like, corn laws. Can... But also, like, you can... Uh, with a lot of countries, like, it's less important. But I can see that, like... Uh, I'll have to try out this strategy on Russia of building out the cattle. I mean, you already, like, build out... I Russia's so good yeah. with wood. I think I would rather just build out wood and export wood um, rather than building cattle. Uh, I think... I imagine on most countries that have enough wood, I'd imagine that that will generally work better for your overall economy because you're getting... Uh, like the chop chops are just better than the like ranches, but that the it ranches kind of depends though, because also building out cattle will literally reduce the amount of yeah, unused arable land. Yeah, yeah. And so you would people from creating grain. You so would like want to build the cattle in one spot. You want to you want to nuke as well, many sub farms as possible. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have as, and not where as you're building wood. little grain as possible as quickly as possible. Although although to and be the fair, the unemployed to pops of... are also not. Um, they're also not going to be consuming much goods. So, like... Yeah, they're not um, consuming a lot. So, maybe you don't... Yeah, I mean, I I still think... I'll have to try that a little bit more aggressively. I tried it a little bit... Uh, a couple a couple times I tried uh, doing the cattle, and I, I didn't like the feel of it very much to force the corn laws. Um, I did it on, like, it's two really, or three really runs. It's really, fast, but you do need to... You do need to yeah, I... I the, I wasn't unsatisfied with um, how fast I was getting corn laws. I was unsatisfied with, like, my economy afterwards. I mean, so. I guess it, I guess it depends on, again, like, how you leverage it, right? I, I tend to think that the best way to leverage corn laws is to get free trade. Um, just because there is there is an outrageous amount of money that you can generate in the world through trade. Just because there's so many goods that are functionally just lying, lying on a fallow on a shelf somewhere. Like, just look at the world in 1836, how many things are at minus 75%. There's an outrageous, outrageous, outrageous yeah. amount of goods that are just doing nothing. And so if you if you just get into free trade and then immediately ramp up the size of your economy by buying those goods and then subsequently exporting them if you, if you need to or consuming them locally if that's better, then – because you're not just looking at the buildings that you've built. You're looking at the overall size and scope of the economy that you're building. And part of that is the interaction with those smaller, less developed economies. And yeah. buying all of their tea is a great way to get money. 
it's not just the the because that that'll get you more construction than then you can build out the 300 and the 450 construction point buildings a little better it's been a while since i looked at all the sub farms i know the fishing sub farms will produce fish are there any that produce any luxury goods i don't think so no, uh, is there i forget if luxury i forget if subsistence workshops produces anything but i don't think they do because there, okay. again there's just like an enormous chunk of the world that has plus 75 cost on on luxury clothes yeah. and luxury furniture which is why that those early forms of industrialization are so profitable it's not just can you meet the goods of the like the needs of your, no, yeah. your pops back home it's how do you make the most money out of this building and it might be sell the luxury clothes to Vietnam. Oh, I like think I, I think you usually want to sell the luxuries just in the abstract. Yeah, um, almost. I mean, I think you almost always want to sell all of them. Like if you if you sell, like I, I remember seeing you you posted on Reddit in response to somebody asking, "Is it better for something to be at minus seventy five or zero? And I'm and plus seventy five. Like kind, of, <laughs> kind of neither. You yeah. want it, it? That doesn't matter. Like don't think yeah. about it that way. The cost of goods doesn't matter. It's whether or not you're optimizing the price of the good. If the price of the good is at minus 75 because you're selling 100% of it, whatever you can, to everyone in the world, and it still is somehow at minus 75, okay, I guess. Um, that's going to depress the ability of your buildings to pay wages, yeah. but at least you're maximizing their, their access to demand. Whereas if it's at minus 75 because you're using isolationism and you're not trading any of them, that's actively bad for the value of each construction point that you've built. Yeah, like definitely. That's, that's there, why trade is so good, because it lets you leverage the existing construction points that you've already built in a way that generates more money. There was someone else who, like, uh, commented on that, which, like, they made a point that I've made before, which is that uh, it also depends on what the proportion of your economy is. Like, if your economy is yeah. 100% wood, uh, which is, like, uh, a theoretical thing that would never happen... But if your economy is 100% logging camps, you would actually just want it to be plus 75. Uh, and everything other yeah. good to be minus 75. This would be preferable uh, yeah. for you. No, you're, just, you're not describing a, a theoretical. You're describing exactly why a bunch of the high standard of living countries, both in real life as well as in the game, are small, small, small economies yeah. specialized in something that is, that is high value. Whether it's high value because there's a high cost of the particular raw resource or high value because it's a, a later step with a lot of a lot of value added labor processes kind of depends on the economy you're describing but like i think it's a feature and not a bug that a bunch of the the highest standard of living countries in the game are like yeah on fine I, I definitely i i definitely think it should be the case also but it's like it's just uh like, a lot of people want to make their construction goods really, really, really cheap, and then they want all their industries to be construction goods, and it's like, then that means your economy is really depressed, and you should just yeah, add construction instead. Yeah, your build more stuff. Yeah. Uh, like, the, and they want to just, like, be making positive money. Uh, although, yeah. I, I remember, like, I'm relatively early into Victoria 3, like, uh, I made a short on, like, railroads or something, and then someone's like, why should we take advice from you? You're, like, negative balance, and I'm just like... <laughs> You don't understand yeah. the game if that's your comment. <laughs> just, just ignore <laughs> idiots like that. It, your life will be better. It's like it's uh, it's deficit spending. Although you don't do that, that's a no no on um, unrecognized countries. But that's like, yeah. It it depends on like a lot of things in Victoria Three. It depends. Yeah. But well. Yeah. I mean, if you're a paying little a bit, lot in terms of debt interest, then you then generally want to. I mean, it, it it is juicing the economy, but like generally speaking, I think that you don't want to do it uh, on uh, what is it uh, unrecognized countries, especially because it's kind of easy to spiral. It's uh, easy to spiral, but also like it does. I think so. The broader conversation of cheese is something that's kind of impossible to have in a, a short form. Yeah, so if you're going to bankrupt, like, an intentional bankruptcy th thing, then like... Or just like war reps. Are, you, are war reps cheese? That that is That is, I think, a philosophical question more than anything else, but it's a way for you to do pseudo-deficit spending. If, if your real balance is minus 30k, but you've managed to get Qing war reparations... Oh, but the, then, yeah, I don't... I mean, I'm talking about what the actual... what the number says. Yeah. And the like if you're if you're says, running into your line of credit, 
Like, you shouldn't yes. run into your line of credit as an unrecognized country. But if you're getting chain <laughs> war reps and you're break even because of that war reps, yeah, just crank that, like, like construction. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Superman like, that. They last for you know. five years. What's the worst that can happen? Blast for more than five years. You haven't done the second yeah, war? If you keep going back. <laughs> if you keep going back, yeah. It, well, you Pretty do, sure you, you get war reps for ten like years. The, that's no, how that works, they, right? Unless they changed it, then it's tied to the truce. No, you take Beijing the first time and Shangzi the second time. That's ten years. Yeah, you. There's a <laughs> there's a short period between yeah, yeah. those wars where you gotta you do have to actually have to pay the for war. the troops to take yeah. the. Yeah, you do have to fight that war. <laughs> they thought it was it's, just ten years. It's every like time. five years on, a few like maybe eighteen months off, and then five years on, and then eighteen yeah, months off. But that, that's where you sometimes like float it's from country four, to country. Sometimes but they then, just back down the second time. Yeah, sometimes they just back down, but. Uh, it depends on who you are yeah. and what AI you're playing against. Yeah, and yeah, a lot of other things. Okay, uh, yeah. so the question I guess I wanted to get out kind of when we started talking about corn laws but then never got to it, uh, was talking about the new corporations uh, feature. My general impression is that I kind of think that uh, it will be... Uh, you, so the reason they wanted to introduce it is to change gameplay, or this is the reason they gave it, so they want to make a gameplay more nuanced and uh, different for different countries, but I kind of think that the, you'll probably just pick the same corporations with every country. Um, but uh, what are your thoughts and uh, where do you think it goes? And it's also super tentative, obviously, because they haven't introduced the mechanic and it's all tentative and like this sort of thing. But I assume I, you've read Last Dive Diary. If, yeah, I think if to make gameplay different for different countries, uh maybe do more stuff with characters but like i think the their mechanical underpinnings for the the game are directing everyone towards something in a way that i i don't even think that's wrong like look at the world map of where slavery was legal in 1836 versus 1936 you can say that the American Civil War was important, but that was part of a macrocosm in which the world moved away from slavery. And there were a lot of factors there that were not specific to individual countries. And so this is a this is a time frame where the industrial revolution is the thing that matters. Humans don't matter. Countries don't matter. Humans don't Their matter. own That's politics don't matter. None of this stuff matters. The industrial revolution is what matters. Like I'm gonna make humans that the title. are consuming fossil goods, <laughs> and all of a sudden we've become gods, and now we have to wonder about the moral consequences of that. That, that I I think it's fine if if countries play pretty similarly. We're we're all playing under the the auspices of. Coal. That's fair, but their objective is to make them play uh, different with these corporations mechanics because they're expecting yeah. ostensibly you pick different corporations based on what your start is and perhaps the unique corporations attributed to each country will be sufficiently powerful that it actually makes a difference like um so one that i thought looked maybe interesting is like uh maybe going the fishing one as your first corporation on sweden uh would be good or scandinavia or whatever um however you want to start that because fishing is relatively good industry and you could just export the fish right and so it would be interesting if we saw a lot more specialization and export um yeah. because of the corporations uh, well, specialization and export is one of those things that i think is going to be indirectly tied to fixing the ai's behavior in regards to investment pool because of the, sure. th the way that the ai's behavior in regards to constructing things as an ai strategy versus the autonomous pool building things the AI builds much more interactive and lively things using the autonomous investment pool than it does with its own government-directed expenditures, which is, I think, That's kind mostly of an accurate f description of events, right? Like, the, the government has its own priorities. Capital is going to go off and do its own thing. And the more that the AI relies upon that capital, the better, which is... That's yeah. why they need to update that. It's, it's ridiculous that it's not there. I, th I think with m multiplayer it might be interesting to see because uh, I assume in single player the best thing to do will be to pick the corporations that focus first on wood and then on tools and then on iron. Yeah, uh, but in sure. multiplayer if every other player is doing wood, tools, iron then you would just crush by doing something else uh, and exporting to these people. I think. Well, the, I, I think there's also a limit there though in that the way that the raw resources work in the world is kind of a joke. 
There, last I checked, there wasn't enough fish in the entirety of Africa to support one level 50 grocery in the entire that continent. sounds not correct, but I'm not 100%. I, I checked that like two and a half months ago and that was the case, and I don't think they've changed the, the levels anymore. So, it, like, they... There's just there's look, not enough raw resources. The, no, Australia's a joke. Yeah, there's just not enough. And I think the the issue is that they want to make it feel like you need to do some expansion and some economic interaction, which is good, right? You should feel like the earliest, easiest to access coal is the coal that humans should want. They should want the coal that's available in the UK because all they needed to do to get it was just like lift up the carpet. But as humans developed a broader economy, they moved into more and more sources of coal and iron and wood and, and all of the other natural resources. And so they had to start exploiting harder to get to things. And that's what the game is like supposed to try to model, but because there isn't a, a scaling modifier on the amount of base goods, uh, they very, very, very quickly run out on a world scale. So yeah. that's like why you I, I kind think, of have to world conquest just well, to like get them to develop things. I like yeah. To some extent, I great, think it's balanced lots of around performance. Yeah, probably. I, I think but... that the reason they don't want to put in more natural resources is because the then like you won't have to stop at fifty thousand construction. I, that's okay though. Like whatever, make a I, I, yeah. No, as the, but the, okay. Like... As as a consumer of the of the game, right? Should the should the game aim to prevent the human from developing a real economy because it's bad for performance, or should the rules be different? I don't know. I like. I, it's I, I'm, it's weird. I'm not suggesting one's better than the other. I'm suggesting that's why they had why they do it. It might be. It might be. It might be uh, like because they, people they certainly do a lot of things to make performance better because they want people to be able to play the game. People complain and more about a, performance than they do goal. about not having a hundred thousand construction. Yeah. Unless they're but, me, but actually no, I, I complain more about performance. Yeah, performance so. is the number one thing. It's the number one thing. But at the end of the day, like the reason that people are asking for more raw resources is simultaneously that there's just like not enough and also the AI is not good at developing them. And by by making the AI better at, at under by by making the AI use more autonomous construction will sort of fix that problem. Sort of. Right. I mean like I, I I think you're correct that like as, in terms of small changes, making the AI construct intelligently would be a, like a really just, nice change. Just make uh, the AI respond to investment pool. Like that, that's all it needs. Just make it respond. That, to investment that's not pool. all it needs, but that seems like a really big one. It'll it'll start the ball rolling because once yeah. the AI starts developing things based off of investment pool, then it'll start having more specialized economies just naturally because it will you know somebody has access to iron and somebody else doesn't and by developing things using the autonomous investment pool you can create opportunities for trade between those those nations right if the if the two nations identify each other as trade partners then nation a which doesn't have iron will buy iron from nation b nation b will then have more ip floating around that will in turn find more iron to develop it'll it'll cause more interactions between the ai I, I'm sure, I'm sure that a lot of this is being done for performance reasons. Um, but yeah, like the more the more the AI behaves rationally and organically, I think the more that some of the problems will show themselves as not being real problems, but rather a problem caused by bad AI. Bad AI. Yeah. I think that's probably right. I mean, I, I, I still think there's like on top of it, there's still, like, additional, like, problems, but that's, like, um... So I mean, you're... almost certainly, but, like, I think, I think the number one issue for the game is performance, and the number two issue is AI, and I think it's been that way since release. That's interesting. I think the, on release, the worst part of the game was the UI, and then... The UI was very now, dumb, yes. The worst the part of the game dumb. is probably, uh, diplomatic plays. But um, for a variety of reasons. But 
overall you're just not very bullish on the corporations then not excited about it's, it it's like i i or, i think you that I, the corporation I, you, stuff you don't seem like, like to want to comment on it too much or not, not no, that you're dodging it but you, you're talking about other things i think i think the corporations are a band-aid i think the corporations are That's sort fair. of like agitators yeah. where they exist to add more flavor to the game in a way that i think is fun but isn't i i think like the most important thing um and also like the change to buildings are going to cost a lot more but now you have 10 more construction point or five more construction points seems <laughs> again in the same like the, well, i think they're trying to slow the player down but. probably but they like i want to i want to know that they've definitely tried it with just ai because i've done just like ai and watched them in the way that they've behaved and sometimes the ai behaviors are getting better and sometimes they're getting worse and I'd be very surprised to learn that getting five more construction points, but considerably more expensive buildings, actually hurts the player more than it hurts the AI. I'd be really, really surprised to hear that. Well, I mean, like, a lot of AI countries just operate off the five for forever. Yeah, they operate off the five forever because of, again, because of the, the yeah, issue with the uh, default construction yeah, yeah. sector. They also have a default value of zero instead of one. And so unless they have enough GDP or pops to demand more construction, yeah. they won't build even the first one, which is all they need so in order terrible. to get the, the IP using, like the IP to actually yeah. use it, which is why there's all these countries like in the 1860s who have, you know, 10 million IP and literally zero construction points and giving them another five construction points doesn't help. Because the the extra five construction points is still not creating a construction it, sector it that in doubles it though. creates the it does it doubles it but it doesn't it doesn't use the IP it doesn't which solve is the, the it, yeah it doesn't it, it doesn't use the IP it but doesn't literally doesn't doubling the, the construction of autonomous is, construction being better than government construction anyway but like all of Borneo for example yeah is going Getting to 10 construction points for the smaller nations yeah. is probably going to help them it's going to um, make the economy like way larger of the ai in that region i i mean like i i see your point it's not going to completely solve it but like doubling it is not a small difference well it's they're doubling it and increasing the cost on buildings sure but if the cost of buildings is like uh you know if the cost of buildings 20 percent higher to... than like uh yeah where you're increasing effective building amount by like 66 percent or whatever except it's more if you have corporations because you get reduced construction speed right but i i i mean we'll see we'll see yeah, yeah, but yeah. like i think largely i think that Victoria 3 does better when it tries to model things from a macro perspective and then inject granularity. And I yeah. think that if they're if they're adjusting the cost on buildings towards corporations, then it's one of those changes that I, I understand why they're doing it, but I disagree with the philosophical change. Yeah. I, I, I think the game's pretty flavorful as is. I, I would like to see like corporations that were like a living breathing thing inside your country yeah. that you maybe had to fight against and like try and regulate and that that was like uh, a sort of additional mini game rather than just giving you a modifier that's like yeah, pretty that would be non-substantive um yeah the the modifier seems pretty whatever and it's just tr it seems like it's probably just changing the way that like changing what's most efficient in a slight way but you'll still just have the same path rather than oh shit i let the logging the, i let the loggers get too big in my country and now i can't pass any laws like yeah um yeah and, or like this I, guy is like uh, he's become the autocrat of the country i have no control or something i don't know or or like oh my god a lot of railroad barons are doing yeah. strike breaking and now we can't get workers protections passed which means that we're gonna have serious issues in terms of building yeah. a consumer a consumer economy yeah or like, <laughs> like uh, oh no. can you imagine if uh you have to like you have to choose like right now you subsidize the railroads the railroads are effectively uh privatized or i mean they're sorry if they're effectively nationalized in terms of gameplay but like what if you like what if they were private and like they get strikes on them and now what do you do you like come in yeah. and you like swing some bats in order to get your like infrastructure up like that's such much that's like uh such an interesting like idea that like uh the government has to get the infrastructure up obviously uh to get like goods moving around and then like there's this like creates like this cascading like internal like struggle uh that's the result we, of the we'll corporation see, not wanting like... to pay people based off of what i read in that that dev diary it sounds like this is more just here's some 
We, bonuses. Yeah. We added corporations. Um, we checked a box. Sure. Yeah, cool. that's kind of what it sounds like to me. I'm I'm not yeah. hyper I'm not hyper excited. I'm actually more excited about something else, which is uh, here. Let me take a note right real quick. Uh, but I'm much more excited about uh, the what is it? Uh, the local goods price change. Oh yeah, that's that gonna be amazing. It's gonna shake it's things gonna up so quite good. a bit. And uh, it it seems like because of a comment they put in the last dev diary, it doesn't seem like it'll work the way I thought it would. But um, it seems, uh, which is that it would only help the player, it would never hurt the player, like you would always use the cheaper price um, or the price that benefits you more so that, uh, like, let's say you're producing iron and tools in one place, uh, the iron would sell at the market price uh, uh, to the market, and so it would make money based on the market price, but then the tooling workshop would buy at the local price, and so it would eat extra efficiency because it's buying at the lower price, and then the other one is selling at the higher price. Uh, because if you didn't do something like this, uh, it would just immediately collapse like the economy, but what this does is it incentivizes you to export everything. Yeah. Which is... <laughs> I, I mean... Like, it's so interesting. Also would make... Uh, uh, free trade not the best probably depending on the we'll, level of effects right depending on the level of effect we'll see i i think that that is definitely out of all of the changes for 1.4 and 1.5 the one that i'm most excited to, to see I, i'm so Just excited like i don't i i feel like it's it could it could be a brand new world to the point where i i would feel compelled to like redo some of my earlier I've been collecting videos. notes for doing, like, a full econ, like, uh, thing yeah. that's, like, six hours long, and I just, like, don't want to pull the trigger on it. But if this... Local prices might make me pull the trigger on it, but, like, that's, like, such a headache to if organize. If local prices happens, I think you're going to have to redo all that stuff, though. Cause, well, like, it's, like, it's, it's going like, to be wildly different. We export everything here. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty... I mean, the, uh, I, I think that largely what you're going to see, again, is that trade is is just going to keep getting more and more and more valuable as, as people i think it sh i think it should it, this should be the trend and just to explain to like the people listening uh why you would want to export everything is because uh if things are just always using the beneficial price then what you want to do is increase prices of everything in your market as much as possible uh and then uh what it will do is in locally all the your industries will all get to sell at the super high price and has this super big price margin and then locally the price of the good can be way lower uh because uh the overall local consumption in your economy is low uh because your most of the consumption is exports which you're exporting it which means you get to have your cake and eat it too and create value out of nothing because the local price is low you get to buy at your own local price and then the like market price is incredibly high that's sort of, and only sort of, but that's sort of the way that the, the global market worked in Victoria too. So I'm not really surprised to see that as a, a framework for the way that they're trying to, to redo things in Victoria 3. But I, I mean, I think vertical integration is important. Yeah. I think it's a little hostile to new players, but I think it's an important descriptor for I think this game is hostile life. to new players. Yeah, this, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> this game is hostile to new players. <laughs> uh, someone was like, uh, I saw someone on Reddit, like, post, I have 80 hours of this game, so I really know what I'm talking about. And I was like, oh, you poor child. No. <laughs> and someone in the comments was even hours. like, back up. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I didn't say anything, though. Because, I mean, you, well, you kind of know what's going on, but you're just wrong. But, like, you're not way wrong. You're just like, you like you. I think the way that you learn Victoria Three, you form a model, uh, an idea of like how the thing works, and then your model's half right, and then you find out you're wrong, and then you update the model, and then you continue doing this until it gets closer and closer and closer. Yeah, you make you make a, a Bayesian model for things. Yeah, yeah. And testing stuff is the annoying part. Yeah, I might have well, to test I, out the cattle again. I've done it before, but I didn't test, like it. Test out stuff but. in debug. Just test out stuff in debug. It saves you so much time. Like, you can you can test a lot of different things in fifteen minutes yeah. with debug, and then and then just like once you have an idea of what is working and what isn't working, then you can play a long form. Yeah, but like, I just it's it's so fast to get corn laws online and it's still you know corn laws that i can respect people who don't want to do it because it's like 
powerful no, I, and makes all games play I the same. I think it's but like, uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of coin laws. Yeah, I, that's understandable as from a meta perspective. But to be fair, that might also like be it why it I don't. It's, why I'm not super yeah. trying hard to force it, but. But I, I mean, I think it's realistic though, right? The, that part of the big problem in the 19th century is the conflict between capitalists and and aristocrats and the people that they're trying to exploit and so like that is what corn laws is at its core and it historically the the object of corn laws is something that's important for the development of free trade in the world and so yeah for I, for anyone who's interested it's impossible to skip. uh we play games does have a video on corn laws which does include some of the history of the corn and the children yeah. of the corn not the movie. I mean, yeah. I'm being joking. The, the, well, yeah, no. But, yeah, <laughs> the, the, con, the, the children of the corn, yeah. What happened to the, the people, the Irish people in the 1850s? Yeah. Hmm. How many potatoes does it take to starve an Irishman? Uh, zero. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, the truth hurts. Uh, okay. Uh, there was another question in here that we've already kind of answered, which is... Uh, AI, how to make the AI not suck, uh, which I think you've already kind of extensively talked I, about. Uh, yeah, we've talked a lot about that, yeah. but I really do think that the, I think that one, the AI government construction should not div produce a good economy all of the time. Like, I think it's a good thing that they have strategies that aren't necessarily optimal. I don't think it makes sense for all expenditures to be perfect, like Unbeeld had. I, um, I think that... But, the what they target build uh, should be the result of corruption and interest group meddling. Well, that's that is supposed to be what yeah. the the strategy Riddled that with they choose is represents. That's what it's supposed to represent. Um, but I think I think just making the the AI rely making the AI build one construction sector and then rely on investment pool produces much 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 better economies for everybody yeah. except for the great powers and, th and then like just delete the construction center if they go like <laughs> are losing money yeah and guess what the ai will do that also <laughs> like you can oh, make do I know very, it? very very yeah. yeah it'll do it it's... you can make very 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 easy edits to overall behaviors with a couple of lines into something using notepad you don't even know need notepad plus plus just regular notepad will work, I promise. Can I make it so whenever I rev, the AI deletes nothing? You can do that, I think, um, but it's that probably requires... probably a mistake, but... It, the problem is that if you do that, it's also going to make it so that the other AI don't delete things. There's yeah. probably a way to add a flag um, in terms of AI behaviors for revolutionary countries. That would probably be appropriate, Um but yeah. I haven't I haven't bothered to, so, to do that yet. I, I'm awesome. trying to make like a full mod, but oh, that, you are? that would be something. That, I know. I'm, very slowly. <laughs> very so, slowly. Uh, I know OPP's here. doing it, but So like uh it, what exactly is let's talk about your the mod you're trying to make. Uh I'm just gonna write down the time for the timestamp. But yeah, uh just like, tweaks. Uh just a bunch of tweaks like what OPB has. I yeah, I haven't tried well, OPB's so, mod. I, I played around with OPB's mod a little bit, but OPB's mod, I think, is aiming to... Because he has an actual modder, so he's aiming to make, like, more sweeping changes, things that are something that are beyond my purview, but, like, I, right. my, the things that I'm looking to in include are things like um, Rod preventing revolutions from deleting stuff, but also I think that the way that the Shogunate opening in Japan event should be restructured the the issue is that like generating an agitator is kind of a pain in the butt as a modder hopefully that's something that they fix in 1.4 and 1.5 but like they should, that might be to protect the, their uh you would hate to like it, sell the agitators could be DLC, yeah. and then could be DLC <laughs> have stuff. someone just yeah. be like all the dlc agitators for free but but I would like I would like for the the shogunate opening event to generate a landowner with a jingoist because a the the human player is going to do that a lot b that's going to help out the AI for Japan in terms of pushing landowners down which is kind yeah. of what they need to do in order to get a Meiji restoration and so they need something in the in the the books and jingoist makes sense right expel the barbarians revere the emperor i wonder what ideology those people are 
pacifist. Jingoist is exactly what we should be getting out of the out of the free trade opening event, not a small short term malice to shogunate power. And so I wanna I wanna have like jingoist agitators spawn, um, but it is it is difficult. <laughs> yeah. it, may, it might be exactly what you highlighted where they want to make sure that the DLC is, is sellable. It, at least until the next I, DLC. Maybe yeah. they, like, speed bump people. I know OPB, I mean, I'm trying not to make a German joke, but he's trying to, in his mod, I know he tries to make the petite bourgeoisie a lot more powerful. Yeah, no, but I, I think that's also a good thing to do. I, um, I do too. When, but. I think that the petite bourgeoisie are in a strange place where they're still useful for the very 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 slice of small slice of countries in in human history who have this this conflict where they're beginning beginning to industrialize and there's a conflict with a landowner and so the the petite bourgeoisie can be actually a a good counterweight to the landowners as for instance the ottoman empire because especially the Ottoman Empire just like is desperately, desperately hungry for bureaucracy, and you're kind of in the same position from a, a, a socioeconomic standpoint that France was in like the 1780s. But like, yeah, the petite bourgeoisie because because of the restrictions on what sort of populations can associate with which yeah. IGs, there's a lot of IGs that just like don't work right now or at least don't I, work the way I think people that want the, them to work the restriction of it has to be your main culture is like very significant yeah, restriction that's dumb that's that dumb doesn't <laughs> don't do that. Uh, i've i've met some xenophobes in my life and they're not all you know no uh, they're, they're not all they're not <laughs> been all, here for a hundred like years <laughs> yeah <laughs> they actually come in all colors uh <laughs> yeah believe it or not uh, which is not like the only feature of the 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 petite bourgeoisie. I like also uh, like the interest groups like relatively strong, but like you don't. It feels like you never really get to make good use of them. Like they're way better uh, if you have their twenty percent bonus. Uh, yeah. Like maybe, and you're like still under eight hundred million GDP, um, and you like are kind of doing really well in tech. Then they're absolutely insane because you basically get zero percent interest. But, yeah, but um, you in order to have a big powerful petite bourgeoisie, either you need a very weird democratic setup, um, or you just need like mercantilism plus relatively low level of technology. And so they, they yeah, always Which drop makes them off. worse. They just always drop Be- off. Because of how the modifiers stack, you like they're really insane when you have all the modifiers. Uh yeah. And but like good luck getting there. Yeah, it's just this, it's this, like, really weird, like, the porridge is just right type of band, uh, where they're insane. But they, like, they also are, like, uh, reasonably strong. Like, I've seen some Reddit posts that say, like, they're useless, and I'm like... That's... There's they're nobody, just hard to get literally powerful. Literally none... Literally nothing is useless. Even the, the landowners have corn laws. Uh, landowners are pretty <laughs> Even... bad, are pretty bad with the way I play. Like if I'm if I'm adamantly unwilling to build like livestock ranches and this sort of thing, they get yeah. That's worse. that's like kind of what I was doing. I don't know a couple like maybe in Before January, 1.3. like a long, 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 long time ago. Yeah. But the the fact of the matter is that anything that allows you to utilize the situation as it is right now, like the powers that be right now to make yourself stronger long term you might as well do it yeah, um, yeah especially because if it's something that makes you stronger short term D- just and, to be uh, yeah i'm, I'm free definitely trade laissez fair is a lot better than than mercantilism and yeah traditionalism like just a lot better just to be, yeah i i mean i definitely in january i definitely was like doing corn laws every single country uh i mean they're, I just they're haven't just good since 1. they're just 3. good like, because you can do it and just move on, and then and then all of a sudden the landowners have used all of their clout, which most of them are going to have a lot of clout. Like, there's not a whole lot of ways around that. As even as like a, you have to be an incredibly incredibly small economy in order to over in, in order to build out a, a landowner to death in like the first five to ten years. Yeah. Whereas you can very 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 easily come up with enough construction points to get corn laws going with most of the countries. 
and then use the clout from the landowner to pass laws that A, make the landowner happy, and B, make them weak, yeah. which is like what you want to do. You want to make them weak, but the question is, how quickly can you do that? And industrialization is the easiest way to get there, and capital is the easiest way to get there, and using the landowners and their political strengths against themselves is generally the easiest way to do that. Are you... Generally. Are you also aware... Well, are you aware of some of the cheese you can do in terms of exiling and, like, forcing yeah. market liberal yeah, that way? Yeah, you can way? do that. Yeah. You can also, uh, like, do a forced abdication with um, yeah. with Nikolai and, and Alexander. People are although you a do huge need fan. To Isn't that... The, that's not... Uh, the popularity. That's not giving you... He's not a market lib, is he? Yeah, he is. Alexa he is? Um, Alexander II is a market liberal. I yeah. thought... I, think I, I saw a post, like, I thought today that someone was saying he was... Uh, what is it, the, like... Oh, fuck, I can't remember. He's it's, a member of like the landed gentry. Yeah, but he, and he's a market they, liberal? Yeah, he's a market liberal. Um, he okay. used to be a member of the intelligentsia, but frankly, that was not realistic. Um, that was sort of like when Mehmed II was a member of the landowners. Yeah. That's also not realistic, so they've made some adjustments to, to the IGs and interest groups. But... Alexander, like, you do need, you it? can't okay. just reformer click was the Reformer was the one, like, someone made a Reddit post, I think, today, where they said he was a reformer. Uh, it's, uh, like, he wasn't three weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> they yeah. haven't released no. a patch yep. since yep. then. That's fair enough. Maybe they meant a reformer in the descriptive sense. Like, he can yeah, pass he, reforms. Yeah, he was. He was, <laughs> but, um, I, was... I don't, he wasn't, he wasn't a reformer in, like, the mechanical sense. I yeah. think he's, I think he's modeled a lot better now. I... But you do have to manipulate popularity carefully, because, yeah. like, he doesn't just magically become the, the IG leader. Right. You have to, yeah. The... It's, have like, to... super it... easy if you have a moderate to start, but... Um, well, you can you can increase like his, his popularity by arranging a royal marriage, and then if it's not if you want to hold on to some of the good landowner generals, then just make him a general and have him command some fights in Central Asia, and then his his popularity will be high enough that he'll take over leadership right. of the IG. Um, and you can also do cheese with China, where you like move your trade center capital to Taiwan and then delete the ports. But like even outside of the the forms of doing that sort of that stuff Gen <laughs> generally generally you have to you have to use the construction points that have already been spent in your economy at 1836 and that's what corn laws is good for right it's good at not just saying what is your economy going to look like in 20 years but what does it look like literally right now yeah how can i leverage the things that i have literally right now and because it's it's got that snowballing aspect to your economic growth Definitely. the faster you can get into good laws the better Plus, plus it, it gives you, like, really, really, really powerful landowners, so you can chew through your, those laws really fast. Yes. Because you get 40% extra power on aristocrats. Like, it's, it's one, so good. One moment. Yeah. Not right now! Alright, sorry about that. It's alright. It's a little... But, like, that, that's that's another one of those events that the I recording. think people... What, the person at the door event? Yeah, I hate that one. No, like the like you get forty percent extra political strength on aristocrats. If you're trying to use corn laws, if you're trying to use corn laws, that's the best event you can possibly get. Yeah, because it just means more political power. What's and the it'll go what's away the year cooldown on that? Uh, the so the mean time to happen on those things. No, no, it's is, like it lasts for two years or five years. Oh, oh, it's five. Yeah. But like that's that's fine because you want you're no, going to yeah. be doing a couple of the different laws and now with the new law change <sighs> or the air quotes new law change like the laws are kind of slower anyway so you do need to worry They're a lot more about as legitimacy. Long as you don't have an agitator. They like They're, you yeah. fucking fly with an agitator. Or well, yeah, if you have you 100%, also got to get lucky on the the agitator. <laughs> how, yeah, much, yeah. how much RNG manipulation do you want to do? Is kind of the other the other meta construct. Yeah. Uh, it definitely is. Um, let's see. I have one more question by the people of the YouTubes, which is a bit of a long question. So uh, I'm going to read it uh, here. 142.30. Okay. Uh, so here's the longer question. As someone who's new to grand strategy games, I've played for about two years now and have a few DD wins in Civ 6, have a few wins on whatever's hardest for humankind, and a few uh, number one ranks on various countries as Vicky 3. Uh, what would I, what I would like to know is of, is 
know of is games you might recommend that have the level of micromanagement which this game has. I know it's probably a daydream, but uh, a game that would could have very, Victoria 3's market control, and but begin from the dawn of mankind, like uh, turn-based options really appeals to me. Does such a game exist? And I'm already oblivious. Which this is kind of a more abstract. That's a longer... Yeah. yeah, that's a more abstract question. I, I can tell you that I enjoy a lot of different games, but I feel like Victoria 3's micromanagement in regards to economics because it's not just in service of economics but also the politics produced by that economics mm -hmm. I don't think anything else comes close um, Victoria 2 <laughs> that's the other one <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think that um, the I think is I think needs to be said about micromanagement in general because there's like good micromanagement and bad micromanagement. If like the micromanagement is always like the same, it's actually just tedious. Like it has to be decision rich. Uh, and a lot of games yeah. that are really heavy in micromanagement are not decision rich. Uh, you're just making the exact same tedious micromanagement ever. And that's just like, uh, maybe for some people like it's soothing cause it's like, like self stimming or something like this. But like, uh, I don't find it interesting, like, micromanagement. Right. And, uh, it's really hard to find decision-rich stuff. And to some extent, usually when you get better at a game, uh, it stops being decision-rich. And it's, like, Victoria 3, like, in a lot of ways, feels repetitive because you kind of, oh, yeah. like, m move in the same direction. Like, uh, uh, it's n a lot of play patterns in Victoria 3 are no longer decision-rich after a thousand hours. Uh, yeah, you just, you build stuff. Like that's that's you crank really up. What it boils you do down one to. thing. I'm here to do one thing. It's, we're yeah. gonna double construction um, every episode. Yep, that's the goal. Until uh, the computer lights on fire. Yeah, until your computer lights on fire. Like you, you, you have the micromanagement decision to like stop doing that just so you can like oh, play the meta five life. Years. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you were talking about the meta life decision where you have the decision the to stop decision. playing yeah. the game. <laughs> <laughs> at, at a certain point, at a certain point, the best the best way to win is to not play. But no, I think I don't know. Like what I know, you I saw that you did some uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms fourteen. Yeah, I'm big. Yeah. Romance, I'm a big Three Kingdoms fan. Uh, the content doesn't do the, very well. The books? Oh, I've read the books multiple times. Excellent. Like Excellent. and not just uh, not the abridged version. I'm talking about the 2500, yeah. 2600 page version. Yeah. 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 Do, do you remember? Were you reading it with? Uh, I would assume you were reading it translated right were you trans was uh, it like no it, or yeah i've read it translated i'm a uh, woman and Gao do the like i don't speak chinese very well <laughs> yeah I, would you remember the transliteration system that you did because i i own it with my oh, child's opinion i can't remember um it's the it's the brown cover for volume one that i think is Which an is, opinion um like what so Zhuge Liang, right is his how is his name transliterated for you uh in is some it spots it's juge leon in some t spots it's kong ming uh, here one second yeah, that, i can pull those it are two up. different guys though or rather that so, no, so transliteration transliteration is the the method where you take sounds from another language and then you write them in a script that someone can read so like juko liang um with c-h-u-k-o is that's Wade Giles, which is one way to present the sounds of Chuka. Um, and then Z-H-U-G-E is the same name, but it's a different system right. for taking his name, which exists as a Chinese character, it's and then presenting the it in a form. Yeah. Version. I have. And I've had this one before. I've also read a different abridged version. I don't think it. But like, I think there, I think there are fun micro management decisions in a lot of the RTK games that are that are interesting. But like, I, it, yeah, it, it if they're if they're perfunctory micromanagement and just a waste yeah. of your time, then I think it's, a lot of them in romance yeah. are that way. Um, it, unless you're unless you're role playing, unless you're role playing, and if you're role, role playing, you're role playing tedium. <laughs> no, 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 you, you can, you can, that's the, the more, the more micromanaging tools you have available to you, the more role-playing you have available to you, because you can actually, like, intentionally create wildly different outcomes. Like, I don't know if you've played CK3, but there's yeah, a yeah. lot of potential for micromanagement there, 
because you know you, there's lots and lots of different interactions that you can do with different characters but like if you're intentionally trying to raise a, a bad air then the decisions that you make are going to have different micromanagement right. choices for you i right? i think ck3 the is a is like a way different game to compare than like victoria 3 though because yeah. like yeah. The what's good is, like, much more objective feeling in Victoria 3, whereas, like, CK3 is, like, you're not trying to accomplish something, you're just try kind of vibing. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think a lot of video games, honestly, at, at their core can be played that way. Because, like, once you get strong yeah. enough that you can do whatever you want to with Victoria 3, like, w once you are a great power you can kind of do whatever you want to if it means going to 1000 infamy and then bouncing off of the, the ceiling then that's yeah. what you do if it means maximizing your standard of living then that's what you do if it means maximizing your productivity and your gdp growth then that's what you do and you can kind of do some of all these things together but like ultimately even inside of victoria 3 you have to you're making a role-playing decision you're making a decision in regards to what are the things that you're intentionally going to try to optimize for that's that's the nature of yeah any of these games i i mean like to some extent i i think some are like much more prone with like like there's no role-playing in chess or actually maybe there's like a little bit there's no role-playing in poker well maybe there's it depends like, there's on some who you're playing that... with. It depends on who you're playing with. With chess, the outcome is either a one, or, or it's one of a one, or one half and a zero. And you're trying to have the one. <laughs> Ideally. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some people, yeah. believe it or not, but... play chess and have fun. <laughs> I don't believe it. Not for a second. I, it, it's true. I've seen no, it happen. No, it's, it's fun, but it's, it's fun. It's crazy zero... I've seen it happen. It's a zero-sum game, though. Like, it... it... If you're if if you're not having any fun, then I'm having all of it. That's how chess works, right? You it, <laughs> that's that is certainly zero a sum. stance. Well, it's it's definitely a, a zero sum game. Now, whether or not on like In the terms fun of part, win that's loss a different outcomes, question. It's certainly yeah, yeah. A, a different sum. No, but, but I'm, uh... I'm saying it's the I, on on one hand, like okay, some games like that to some extent with the, regards to the RP. On the other hand, like. There are definitely games that are way more conducive towards RP than yeah. others. CK3 is a lot easier to roleplay in than, than, Vic than Victoria 3. And yeah. it's certainly more than chess. Um, yeah, and both a lot more than chess. It's certainly. Like, chess is, like... I think that I can't think of a, a less roleplaying game. Maybe Tic-Tac-Toe? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but Tic-Tac-Toe doesn't have a lot of complexity. War? Like, well... Uh, war? You're talking about no, flipping see, the cards and like yeah, flipping cards, but but oh, but then that's a can, coin flip. It's a coin flip, but you can. I don't know. Like, how do you role play those things? It it depends I think it's, on. I think it's all role play because it's like coin flip. Boundless right? imagination of a six year old with a deck of cards. Yeah. Then just, then everything is role playing. You're role playing smack talking at that point because otherwise you just flip yeah. a coin instead. Yeah, right? exactly. And take, like, I think it's there's a ton of role play in war. But like, There's a ton of role playing and flipping a coin. I mean, like, when was the last time you watched No Country for Old Men? What's the most you've lost on a coin flip? Yeah, basically, such a great scene. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> chess. Chess is really. You want to talk about micromanagement, though? Chess is a good one. Yeah. You have to think about everything. <laughs> this is this is, I think, a, a really interesting question, though, because like, the how have you played Civ Six and Humankind? Uh, I can't remember if I played Humankind or, like, Beyond Earth, or, like, it's some other name, uh, some other, like, uh, basically Civ Six ripoff. I, I don't want to call it a ripoff, but, like... It's, it's distinct from, it has a lot of its own things going on, because Humankind, its victory system is a lot more board gamey in that, like, it, it's... It is certainly possible to do just a bunch of world conquests, but that kind of also depends on the size of the map that you're yeah, on and how many AI I, you're playing with. I'm not trying to and be so, dismissive for the game. Just if you're trying to describe it in 30 seconds or less, you probably invoke Civ. Yeah, it's a it's a 4X that's similar to but distinct from Civ Six. Yeah. But like both of them involve micro decisions in regards to economic development in a way that I think is a little more 
prescribed by the world that you're that you spawn in than Victoria 3 because in oh, Victoria yeah, yeah. 3 there's so much that's known right you yep. know where the wood is you know where the iron is you know where the random coal is, except Victoria for would be some sweet of that stuff yeah that will it would be different it, i don't i don't know it, as long as it spawns like good amounts it would be of sweet. things i would just would love coming through the map being like where's the gold at because yeah, you don't know the, where it's where at this? It's just like at once where's, a year you're uh, like on january 1st let's again? see if any gold's been found um yeah i'm so tired of taking transwall every run i just like want to peel my eyelids over my head but it's i mean what are you gonna do it has yeah, a ton it, of gold and coal and iron and it's easy to take yep there are certain directions that you kind of have to go if you want to develop a big economy in victoria yeah. 3 you can't un, at the moment you can't rely on trade for everything you rely on it for money that's a you get you get resources sometimes but money is what what you get from trade yeah like it's like uh do you I, I'm maybe you've heard of like the the case that uh, the stakeholders in Ford brought against the, against the company. The company wanted to raise wages across the board and basically just pay out to their workers. And the shareholders sued Ford. Uh, and I think about this in the context of Victoria 3 quite a lot. They sued Ford uh, because Ford was morally obligated or like legally obligated to only make money for the shareholders and they won that decision and it makes me so and they made it so that Ford could not choose to pay their workers more uh, because they could just pay them less and still employ them uh, and because there was a fiduciary duty uh, to pay out the workers. I the, forgot. the shareholders you mean? Yeah, the shareholders. Yeah. And I, I forget the yeah. point I was about to make but no i like that is i think i think that that is descriptive of the world in victoria 3 right especially now that they've redone the way wage calculation works the wages um, won't go down they're still like bugged in that way Uh, if the building's profitable wages will not go down there are some bugs there are some bugs there Uh, it's like uh, like subsidies also won't go down like i think or uh is that I forget exactly. I think if the building is profitable, subsidies won't go down <laughs> or something yeah, like the this. Building, so the building the has building, to become non-profitable <laughs> first. The, yeah, exactly. The building <laughs> has to become non-profitable again. Also, there is subsidy issues where, like, you, it'll even perfectly profitable buildings will still drain subsidies. Although, is that a feature or a bug is kind of a question you have to ask yeah, yourself. Because it, uh, what it does is it slightly increases wages, right? More than it should? It, yeah. It uh, slightly increases wages more than it should, and um, it, it, it also kind it, of... It's, it's so transparent It creates an economic strange. incentive for people to just have more money. Because, like, in order to proc it, like, you have to... There's also a way to increase, like, equilibrium employment without paying any subsidies. <laughs> I yeah, forget just, exactly how you do it. I mean, I honestly, I don't use subsidies that much outside of no, outside I, I of think railway. They're, like, I think they're, they're bad. mostly a waste. But there, there is a way to make it so that you have higher equilibrium level of employment than you otherwise would, uh, and you still don't need to pay a subsidy to do it. I gotta. I if you if you hear more about that, let me know. I'm curious to. It, inv- to it see involves what it's, that it, is. You're, it involves using subs, but the the equilibrium level when you are currently subsidizing, uh, in like a specific. I for, I I can't remember how to describe it. Like one viewer was like telling me like about it, but like, uh, it is at the the threshold where you like uh start to fire off pops is just a little bit lower, uh, or is. Yeah, it's just a little bit lower when you're subbing. And so you do subsidies for this tiny narrow band where you'll have higher level employment while you're paying nothing. And then you try and just thread the needle in that band and have higher yeah. employment. That, that sounds like <laughs> the kind of micro that I don't think either of us enjoy. No, and I, I, I also just like free money, so I like laissez-faire. <laughs> yeah, it's... It, when capital is important, the laissez-faire pool. is the... It's, it's mathematically true when when capital is important you want laissez-faire in free trade when capital stops being as important you can do whatever you want to but like when you're doing the the initial part of your growth before you're doing world conquest or sol or whatever it is that you want to do well you 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 could also use capital is all that matters you can use the capital to drive consumption right so like it's 
it's that your capital starts becoming not as much capital. Yeah. Well, it, it, <laughs> or it's, it's cap- partially that there's the IP issue, but also just due to the way the raw resources are distributed, like you, you want to start f- moving into specifically finding more than just money. You want, oh, de- you want definitely, pots and raw like, resources it's, later on. It's like, it's, it's not necessarily an option. So like, uh, but like you, like in the abstract, I mean, if, like if you I'm have saying, enough capital, you can also drive demand by just, doing worker protections like minimum wage yeah yeah you can do that but you you could also do it by building more military and stuff too um yeah yeah or just any government spending pays out well i just always build more construction like uh but like the the acquiring resources and and what to do with money are like two different bands of things they're they're, not like mutually exclusive no but they they move around in terms of what's important Right. If you have, if you can still sure. add like a hundred more stacks of coal, and you only have five developed right now because your economy is kind of small, yeah. then conquering more coal doesn't matter that much because you're not anywhere near close. No, yeah, to yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. You're just preparing yeah. for the future when you are going to run out. Yeah. Like, yep. it's it's important, but it's only important because you have like long term goals. It's uh, yeah. You see a lot of red like, posts the, be like, "I ran out of oil. What do I do?" And it's like, "Well, you played differently twenty years ago." Yeah, that's that's the that's the core of it. Yeah. Although fortunately, if you ran out of oil, there's a lot of nations that are very easy to conquer. Yeah, oil's maybe not the... the best example, like because yeah. you can go after Persia, Bahrain, uh, but there's, like just go to the UAE. There's like there's a bunch of countries that have functionally zero military that you can just direct conquest and because they have extremely low pops they don't generate any infamy yeah and like trucial states gets like 40 or 50 oil it's like a, it's a lot and there's a lot of other a lot of other nations you can go to persia too but they're just like a ton of nations that get yeah. a lot of oil per- now persia is if you play super long term persia is really good like if you play to, good. I, if you either dominion them really early or you go protector into dominion but they protect the borders like a lot or whatever depending yeah. the borders they're in yeah, defend our borders. Uh, yeah, you so, you, have, have you looked in the game it. code? What causes that is that either being a conservative in government that's having a, is that having a conservative in government or being unrecognized yes, that's that a, drives that. So there are a couple of things that factor into it, and those are two of them. Um, okay. The last time I looked that up was a while ago, but I've yeah, always the suspected AI it was behaviors those two. for what causes that is is almost exactly what you would expect. It's it's having a conservative, unrecognized power preferably a landowner who is not um like a market liberal moderates yeah. are generally the the go-to thing because you get a lot of moderates whenever you have happy igs like that makes sense yeah. and then um they i think they also have a modifier for gdp but that that's been a while since i've looked at that interesting with the modifier for gdp actually that makes a lot of sense though because, like, they, yeah, you'll get, like, it... uh, Mexico and Venezuela very often do yeah. defend the borders. Yeah. But, like, Argentina a lot less, but their GDP is not way larger. But I think the only difference I can tell between, like, Argentina and Peru is, like, you have way more, like, infrastructure or something. Like, Argentina has almost no bad state constr- like state modifiers, yeah, yeah, that's whereas what... almost all of the rest of South America has bad ones. Yeah, that's the, so that's, the thing. I'm the, yeah. that's the one thing I can think of. That's like paired with the infrastructure. Yeah. All all of South America is just nerfed into space for no reason. Uh, minus yeah. minus forty well, percent state construction efficiency. Boom. Sardinia PN wants and well, maybe they should have. I don't know. I freaking hate some of those. St- I actually hate the construction malice state modifiers. Like, uh, because some of them just don't make sense. Like yeah, in some, provinces some with are... like that are all flat, and then they have one mountain. Somehow they randomly yep. have this like, you can't build here. Like, and what? some of them are in nations and states that historically were like cores for industrialization. Yeah, right. That doesn't make any sense. No, but that, the that seems they're, strange. They're trying to put something. I don't know. They they're trying to put some localization in there, and then like I get it and add flavor. Oh, I'm so annoyed they nerfed the Mosque of Jeanne without nerfing the. What is it? The Statue of Liberty or uh, um, Forbidden City? 
Yeah, although, frankly, Moscow Jenny is one of those things that I don't think that they... I think that was there as mostly a, like, as flavor, and they and then people figured it out, and then yeah. they were like, oh no, our flavor, what did we do? What did we do? Everyone just conquers this one place every single game. Well, everyone's still taking yep. Beijing every game. It should be yeah. contingent on being Confucian. They, they, need, they need to redo China, though. Like, they, China just is, like, a mess right now. You know, Catholic's also the best uh, religion in the game. Do you know why? There's one mechanical mm. difference for Catholic. Catholics get access to to papery, like they they can use Vatican City, but That's I right. don't think that makes them the best in the game. Because uh. like if you want to do authority stacking, then playing in Japan, for instance, as racial segregation and freedom of conscience gives you access to being able to tolerate no, yeah, everyone I, in the Eastern religion group. And then you can still have tons and tons and tons of authority for for the purposes I, I mean, of, I, of authority. I stacking. think generally optimal total separation is just better than the authority stacking, and so generally, generally, but uh, it, it depends on what you're but doing. You, you, like, you, you also can, have to with the authority. You have to be getting more than a hundred authority, right? Because that's what the Vatican gives. So you're uh, are you talking about something yeah. that gives you one fifty, right? So racial segregation and East, so it's it's specifically that combination of things because they there's just like an infinite number of pops that Japan and Ching can tolerate under racial segregation because Xenosphere applies to both of them, um, and East Asian heritage applies to both of them, so they can do like uh, just a because it's not just the flat authority of, of no, but like you could go specific event. you could go multicultural it's, and oh yeah, you can't go multicultural Catholic and get Chinese pops. Yep, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it, it kind of depends. Like, Catholics get access to the yeah. Vatican, but Japan gets access to Hindus and Buddhists and Shintos under freedom of conscience. Um, and so then you can still yeah. have a lot, I, of, a lot of authority, but yeah. I, I think it's better to go multicultural total sap and be Catholic, but there's certainly an <laughs> argument for Japan. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's generally best to just ignore authority and just... No, it's do, not very effective. Other stuff, but I mean, hyper late but, game. Unless but you're hyper late the, game, yeah. If you're the, doing consumption taxes on textile mills, you can or on on regular clothes, you can make an outrageous amount of money as as some of the bigger countries. Yeah, I, I think hyper late game, the the best one becomes resource encourage resource industries, but. Uh, well, yeah. Once once everything is running out, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Once once you're in t- once once the tiny amount of raw resources that exist in Victoria three are exhausted, yeah, then encouraging putting that on like Shanxi kind of and Perm and uh, Silesia and what's another yeah, big one? Town. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's it depends on where you are, but there's a lot of nations and a lot of states that have uh, an absolute crap ton of coal and iron. Yeah. The, but like uh yeah taxing por- porcelain and but like the thing is you don't need a lot to tax porcelain and services and i think no, these are generally but, the two better but ones but. like again depending on the size of your economy and the structure of your economy like l- look for yourself the next time that you're building one of these massive gps with you know gonna, 50k construction yeah how much you would make by taxing regular clothes in 1880. Because regular clothes are a little more expensive in terms of authority, but once you've built out an industrial well, I, base... I've never had 50k can, construction in 1880, but... Well, whatever. You can make a lot of, you can make a lot of money by taxing regular yeah, clothes but, but once you've built it. Usually, them. usually, like, game, you're trying to stimmy the economy and you'd rather uh, they just consume more. Uh, usually, yeah. Uh, or like I would rather tax the the upper rung pops because it has you less always of a, generally would rather do that yeah uh, but but if you're running it's non consumption taxes on the, it's what is it non linear on the uh, the the effects of wealth on SOL are non linear so it's better to tax rich people well it's it's unless you're not trying to depress like literacy I guess it depends on yeah one if you're trying to depress literacy but also sol like the average sol for your nation is just the average sol for all of the pops in your entire nation right right but it's so it takes more money to drive up one point of sol the more the higher your wealth is yeah so like at a certain point you get diminishing returns trying to max you get diminishing returns in a lot of things in victoria 3 like it's that's just the way the systems work so it's like it's that's 
a why I wouldn't want to tax regular clothes, even if I extract more wealth uh, from the tax. Although, I guess it would give you a lot. If, I, if you're in if cooperative economy, you, you, they can afford it. Uh, I, I still think I'd rather tax the luxuries, but the that you, they can you, afford you, it is you probably fine. Both. Yeah, well, you but can it, do like, both. You, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, like, you can do both. I would rather tax all the luxuries and. Uh, well, actually, it depends on what the price of regular clothes and uh, luxury clothes are. Yeah, uh, but like also you probably want to that... tax the one that is more it depends expensive, on the, right? Because again, depending on where your wealth is distributed, you're not necessarily hitting upper or lower. Because if you if you in if you're in cooperative economy, then you don't have an upper strata. And yeah. so your SOL is just a lot no, more yeah, reflective yeah. It's, of it, it's a little bit mid. different, but the, it's, like, it's pretty different. Uh, there's still it, like you don't do you don't do authority stacking. Well, there but there there are Las people who have a wage. It's just not good. There are people who have a wage but, multiplier of one, and there are people who have a wage multiplier of four. Still, you know. Yeah, yeah. There are, so there the, are still going to be classes. The people with a wage multiplier of one are eating the regular clothes. But if they if they are getting enough uh, wealth that they're at like fifteen SOL, then their consumption patterns are going to be pretty meaningful. I don't think different. they can get that high. You can you can get an SOL of fifteen on laborers. Mm. With with cooperative economy and workers protection. I mean, I think you can with machines going and after stuff. productivity. You can get a you can get fifteen like one five, SOL on on lower strata pops really really easily. Like I that's, think that's, that's kind of the you're... upper limit. Like you're yeah, not getting twenty. You can, well, like you can get to to, you can get to eighteen pretty easily. Beyond that, kind of depends. But it it also depends on how much money you have running around. I mean, I like to, the I higher the productivity buildings that you have, the higher the SOL is going to be for your your lower strata pops. Right. I mean, it also right? depends on how many pops you have. Yeah. It, it depends, yeah, it depends on how on many, many pops you have you as well and yeah. like if you're at a point where uh you're starting to get like equilibrium like un like you're starting to get unemployment because you're like at an equilibrium and like this type of stuff i guess maybe i have to double check i'm just i'm thinking of like what the actual wage is more so than the sol and i like i think that the like getting a normal wage like at a, after a certain point, it's well, really hard to the increase SOL the normal is the thing wage. That determines goods consumption. It, it's the thing that like the well, wage a, produces the SOL, but also the SOL informs what goods are being consumed. And so, if you can get to fifteen, then you start substituting a lot of goods with luxury goods. Yeah. And so that dramatically shifts around how important it is to put consumption taxes on basic goods. Because if people are getting all of their clothes as regular clothes, then a regular clothes tax is a lot more painful. But if yeah. everybody is being is a, is able to buy luxury clothes because you're able to get your your SOL for your lower strata to seventeen because you have level five worker protections and cooperative economy, then people don't care if you if you tax their, right. their regular but clothes. Right, then the, the, the tax won't yield that much if that's like the situation. No, it'll still it'll still. Lead. I mean, if you're building a big economy, there's still a lot of consumption going on, right? Especially if you have a big economy with a large workforce ratio, uh, yeah. You but I mean, a like lot of, per authority, of consumption going like you'll on. probably get more from luxury, like clothes. Usually, usually, but you should always check it. Like, don't. This is, I think, the most important thing when it comes to Victoria Three. The heuristics are there as a crutch, not as a straitjacket. You should, you should always 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 double check your work because there are there are surprising things that can emerge out of the the horrible machinations of the game sure yeah but I, yeah i i mean i'm still more on taxing like the the luxury goods sin, yeah like services and sin has kind of been the the meta when it comes to consumption taxes since they made the adjustment yeah. to authority costs like so I, I don't like think I, I can't recall 1. like 0. a time 6. recently that I put in like a regular clothes like tax, but like um, beyond uh, like there's I mean there's like I've two consi it. there's two considerations there right there's like yeah. uh, how efficient it is per authority and then there's also like which pops you want to be taxing and like the it, it it's generally not good unless you're in a late game authority stack with cooperative ownership um but like one of one of the people who's been in in my discord for like forever jimbo has done a lot of a lot of dark math on that uh and the generally speaking 
services, sin, and and you know luxury. Although luxuries are all sins. Um, that's, that's the hot. The yeah, hot I team. mean, like all, uh, all porcelain and sins. the. I I mean, I'm not authority stacking much. Like, but like, but and if then you... I'm using my authority like on the resources instead of uh taxing and it's, I a, it's want to less of a, like economy. a long-term thing at least the way that jimbo uses it it's less of a long-term thing and more of like a midterm replacement for the ip that you miss out from switching out of laissez-faire right because if you're switching into cooperative economy then you're you are going to crash your available capital by you know not having capitalists Sure. And so you, you want to supplement it with something. And depending on how much authority you have, one of the easiest ways to get, like, 10 to 15 years worth of extra cash is just doing authority stacking and then taxing regular goods. And because there are things like secret police running around and, and you know, outlawed dissent that are not bad if you prepare for them, then you can get a lot of authority without having to be, like, a super racist Nazi and then you get lots of extra money for some amount of time until capital really stops mattering, and then you and then you switch over to resources. At what point is he swapping to workers? Like, what GDP range are you talking about? It, it depends on the the nation that he's been playing, but he's like he he's been doing a lot of Sikh Empire stuff since the beginning of time, and so generally it, he switches like it. He'll switch over to cooperative economy, or com- it used to be command economy before they nerfed it. But cooperative yeah, is one economy of those things that you, you just switch over to. Yeah, command is basically nonsense now. Um, it's it's I guess it's fun that it's there for a role playing reason. On uh, the divergences but, mod, there's a like the Incan Empire starts out with command economy and like two million GDP, and it's like insane there. Yeah, yeah. But, it's if you if you have a tiny 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 economy, then command economy is pretty good. <laughs> if if you're playing as the the massive SOL Lanfang and don't want even more massive SOL through cooperative then command could be yours I guess I still think but, it's not, well like yeah, I think you have to have not good. under four to five hundred million GDP for it to be good and yeah, by the time it, you can go at you you won't should have not. that I, I it, in my experience by the time you're getting workers co-op you're like trying to juice the economy and you're not trying to extract as much money as possible out of it so this is like kind of why the the like taxing regular clothes in that specific context like just doesn't like uh click for me but like it it, it's a it's about the the investment pool substitution more than anything else and it depends on on where you are in terms of your economic and diplomatic development Right, because if you're one of those nations that starts relatively backwards technologically, especially, then you might not have all of the things necessary in order to to make a late game push towards massive SOL. You you might have to just take cooperative economy if you get a good radical early. Well, or, you usually know, I'm switching to or whatever. Uh, more on the basis of my GDP than on uh, the basis of like pushing a certain type of SOL for co-op. Like usually somewhere I, I think between eight hundred million to get... one point two billion. I, I th- the game is random. You should take it when it's offered to you once you're big enough that it would be useful. Like I, mean, it, I think like, if you're looking for like a specific exact numerical goal, then I I don't think that 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 is respectful towards the mechanics of the game. Well, the, the around eight hundred is. Not, Around 800 is when you, uh, the malice starts to eat through the bonuses yeah. and it, you'd start but deleting if you money. Get offered one, if you get offered a way to start working towards it because you get good agitators at 550, are you going to say no? Like, mm. that, that agitator isn't going to last forever. Those, those people don't last forever. No, I, I, and I, depending I, on... Like, I mean, I might again, say... It's, it's I, there's a certain threshold where I'll say no. Like, I wouldn't say no at 700. Right, I, like, I don't know where it is where I'd say yes. That, it also nukes why, your customs. That's why, union. like, it, it yeah, it nukes your customs union. Yeah, so that's like, that's the other. That's like, kind of a bigger context one, I think. is context is way more important than having specific numbers. If I because if, because the game doesn't operate with sure, but within I'm, a vacuum. I'm just saying. I'm, yeah, but I'm saying that usually your economy looks a particular way when you like swap to. Or in my in my yeah, opinion, it looks but, a particular way because the context is usually 
I, I guess if you have zero customs union, then swapping like at five hundred fifty seems yeah. like I would. Yeah, I'd probably say yes. It also to that. is contextual based on like how small you start and where you are in terms of your development. Because because if you're if you're a very 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 small nation at start, if you're playing a Sakim, then you might need to start juicing your economy by increasing demand and giving people access to more capital earlier than you'd expect. Because it, like, you just it doesn't matter as much if the the GDP malice is good or bad, versus what it is you need for the next ten to fifteen years. Just just do whatever do whatever is gonna make you strongest or help you accomplish. Yeah, yeah. Your goal. I just, uh, I I mean I I think I would just need to take like a look at a save file of like what this is when like yeah. the the I, like, I, I can ask you but like. I, I mean, I can't put it up right now. It's an interesting yeah, question. Like, it's a good substitution for a very specific situation. Yeah, yeah, and I understand what you're saying is that the SOL looks the SOL is in a particular spot as a result of co-ops that makes taxing the regular clothes like good, um, and uh, and it's good in a sense that like over it also like so the biggest benefit you get from like or one of the bigger benefits you get from taxing the luxury goods over the regular goods is the uh, increase in literacy and if you actually and this increase in literacy increases political participation so like if you're specifically trying to depress the trade unionists like ig uh because literacy informs like participation like you could tax clothing to depress the ig if you want it, I, I guess. I think also people generally overstate the effect of taxes on SOL. Like, most of the time... I mean, it, it makes a when substantive difference. It's a lagging effect, though. Look, it look takes at, a while to like, go down look at it, SOL. Look in the tooltip, though. Like, literally look in the tooltip at where your SOL is coming from, from a lot of, for a lot of these pops. Outside of when they're peasants. Outside of when they're peasants. Yeah, yeah, most yeah. of the time, taxes are going to be, like, 10 to 25% of... of where their money is going right most of the time like it that it, it's that's not informing their sol that much anyway the, i mean the it's bigger the bigger thing that's bit. informing their sol is money if they get their if their wages are good their sol is yeah be i mean the average wage multiplier of your country is like a more important thing but i'm just saying if way, you're way, if way, you're way, trying way if you're trying to so like the machinists in particular and the and so the machinists in particular are like almost always going to be politically active anyways so it's like whatever i think it's the machinist no it's the engineers one of the two is almost always politically active but the other one is uh only has a multiplier a wage multiplier of 1.5 so they are like particularly sensitive to you know increases in their literacy and decreases in their literacy which you get from like wealth uh yeah and like it's a sufficiently low multiplier that like um, you know, the, the diminishing, like you're, you're not, you're generally not in a band where you're just like eating a ton of luxury goods that are exponential needs. You're generally eating like linear needs for them. And so yeah, like, gen generally, yeah, it, generally it's contextual. A, it's contextual. Though. Sure. Like, like the 1.5 is like, it's hard, it's hard to get the 1.0, like in a really like stratosphere band, but 1.5 you can. Okay. Yeah. But the, it's, it's the, different. I, I think specifically for the trade unionists, because the machinists or engineers, whichever one, I think it's machinists, uh, you know, like, I think it would move clout in, like, not, like, a double-digit percentage, not anywhere near a double-digit percentage, but you're if you're talking about, like, moving clout 2 to 3% or something like this, I definitely think that's possible. It's a lagging effect. It wouldn't move it instantly, because SOL takes a while to adjust. Try, try it out with debug, but I think you'd be surprised at how unimportant taxes are for most things unless you're doing stacking on a specific, like a specific strata, right? If, you're, if you do a whole lot of consumption taxes on goods that aristocrats buy as Japan in the beginning of the game, then yeah. you can have a pretty meaningful impact on, on the cloud outcomes. But like, it you helps that also they're have, not consuming a bunch of different luxuries. Inf influence, yeah, they're not consuming a lot, but you can also or or you can influence clout by just promoting a general. It's like there's so 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 many tools and so many different levers yeah. that you have in terms of making adjustments that just because one thing makes one adjustment somewhere doesn't necessarily mean no, that you sure, can't but like, if, that if, if by it, just in the context a of co-ops, right? 
you're yeah. the the clout of you're probably doing a lot of things if you're trying to smash out the trade unionist clout if you have co-ops and you're trying to get I mean triple in my experience once you, once you start getting a powerful co-op invariably you just have like a 50 plus percentage armed forces at a certain point like this is the way that that economy yeah well like depressing the, the armed forces is like uh well i mean there's ways to depress the armed forces too you could pay low military wages which i generally don't do but pay anything less than very high military wage i'm gonna reach through here i'm just saying you can't you can't do it if if you're trying to specifically like you want to have three powerful igs or four powerful igs it's generally really hard to do on co-op and i haven't tried i haven't tried to push three or four powerful igs but i'm just saying like that would be a context for wanting to tax that strata for using regular yeah. clothes is, can, is what I'm saying. But like, I don't, I don't tax regular clothes good. to do that. Like I've never tried to depress the trade unionists because usually they're just like kind of in the stratosphere with co-ops, but like in theory, you could try it. I, I think you'd be surprised at, at the short term effects of, of being able to, to tax regular clothes or regular furniture. Once you've developed a real economy, largely you're not going to be doing this like largely you're not going to be doing authority stacking in the late game anyway right largely no, you're going to get I, I mean like I, I think that the laws are like you're, descent. you're you're offering me like a context that i kind of have to mentally construct because it's not yeah i have not done it's, too many authority stacking uh workers cooperative runs in the late game starting as a particularly small nation it's it's something that one uh, of my viewers does and so like crap so the of. and talking about like there's this like particular weird. sol band where you like want to tax uh regular clothing like i mean i kind of so here's what i suspect i haven't done the dark math you said he did the dark math so like he's done the dark math he's done so some like the, the the spreadsheets generally the spreadsheets spreadsheets have spoken but uh the the like Sometimes you actually don't want to tax as much as possible. Sometimes you want to stimmy the economy. And sometimes yeah. you want more wealth in the hand of poor people unless you're, like, trying to decrease their clout or something like this. Uh, and so I think those considerations are particularly strong if he's tr- trying to extract the most money. But, like, also, when someone proposes, like, a strategy that seems pretty strange to me, uh, I often have to... I mean, I often try and think through it really hard. But, like, a lot of times it's also more often than not what it is is like someone found a strategy they like doing and uh it works because almost everything works and then it's really not like optimal but like i'm not saying this is this i'm just saying i suspect like without looking at the dark math but like yeah the 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 invocation of of dark math increases my confidence which is why i'm trying to understand it but it, it it basically the thing is is that like at a certain point you're not going to be worried as much about the the cloud because one once yeah, you yeah. switched over to cooperative, cooperative I, means that there are going to be some IGs that basically do. I'm, not, function, I'm, not, su- I, I'm right? not suggesting I, w- I want to do it for the clout reason. I'm just offering a reason why I think yeah. it could the clothes. I, I'm trying to defend clothes with a suggestion. I, I've like, I've never tried to it's, attack the clout of the trade unionists after it's, co-ops. It, well, it's, it's not about attacking the the clout of the trade unionists at that point because you're not you're not going to have a full a full society or a full economy once you have cooperative, right? Once you have cooperative, or if you go full into full anarchist, like the clout of things doesn't matter anymore. There are only going to be a handful of IGs that are yeah. going to meaningfully participate in politics anyway, which means that like clout stops mattering nearly as much. the the wealth The wealth yeah. is being distributed in a way where where the humans are going to make wildly different decisions than they would over a in a, in a different like yeah. liberal market democracy. And so the societies are different. You don't need to worry about whether or not you're attacking people because there's there's like four IGs. Yeah, I mean, j- just also for the sake of the viewers, I think that the better way to do it would be just to decrease your education level. Um, well, if if, but... if you're switching into, into cooperative, you're also probably just moving past the important point of, of capital. It's like that's the the real end well, goal. Well, well, like uh, so. I I mean, I I think you model it a little bit differently than I do with this important uh, point of capital. Like, uh, but I think we're thinking of like a similar thing where it's like the equilibrium point where there's not enough consumption or uh, price uh, 
uh, injection into the there's not enough consumption in the economy to reach uh, full employment and instead you're at equilibrium employment and at this point you right. stop wanting extracting it, money out of the economy and you'd rather let the pops eat uh, more wealth because it increases employment and like it gets everything yeah you goes. get the, the multiplier on on cash because right. and- everyone's consuming stuff and everyone's <clears throat> consuming each other's stuff yeah but you can use trade to supplement that too yeah so. yeah yeah to to affect prices that's fair but like usually when you get to a pri- point where you you're seeing a lot of equilibrium employment rather than full employment then you want to uh stop taking money out of the economy right and so like then taxes aren't as good anyways yeah um that's that's uh, when you start backing off of taxes uh, but or, or like then. in in like the language of your model the capital stops mattering let's say because you can't produce there's no point in producing an additional building if the building can't be productive because it can't employ yeah. anyone because you're at equilibrium employment and like this sort of thing so specifically the clothes have to be at a point where you do care about capital and uh you care about capital but it's producing also the most wealth like possible right is, is yeah, that what it does? It produces the most wealth per authority? It pre- So cl- the thing is that clothes are very, very particular because of the way that there's just like a massive amount of fabric in the world, right? Sure. Clothes are a product of textiles, which in turn uses fabric. And because the AI generally doesn't do a lot of economic development, fabric is a good that is just in, in massive, massive, massive oversupply sure. in the world's economy. And so regular clothes are one of those things that it, as a as an industrialized nation, you're going to have in like gross abundance by the mm-hmm. time that you get to being a big, powerful nation. And so you can a export them pretty easily yeah, without yeah, having a, a meaningful detriment to your SOL. But if you're able to export them without it being a, a meaningful detriment to your SOL, then like logically, it should also inform to you that, yes, you can also put consumption taxes on them because it's again, the, yeah, yeah. If you're again, if you're if you're making fifty thousand units of clothes and you're exporting twenty thousand of them, consumption taxes are also not going to hurt you as much as you'd expect because yeah, yeah. a lot of that uh, demand like, is not local. So like uh, the 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 lower rung pops drink liquor and occasionally I tax liquor. Generally, I try and just tax the upper rung pops and like this is for like literacy yeah. like type Gen- reasons. Generally, and it's like kind of marginal. Tax but services just to show <laughs> who's boss. That's well, <laughs> usually the lower strat is not consuming st- uh, services until like they have an SOL. I forget what it, where it kicks in, but the SOL has to get reasonably high before they start consuming a lot of services, anyways. Um, are reasonably high in like the early game or whatever but the, the there's like a, there's a band where like you're you're making as the like surely clothes are not like the first tax but you're saying like you have like uh what is it like 800 worth of uh taxes and clothes is one of them or something like this in order to get the most money uh, yeah, like, like it's it's being informed is, by what buttons you're looking at but services actually do kick in at 10 like you, you start getting slow, yeah, tiny yeah, amounts but it's, of it, it's, for, for services. It's not um, the you. You won't increase the percentage that they're paying the taxes by very much by putting in services tax, right? Because uh, they're because they're the spending strata. such a small percentage yeah. of their overall overall yeah. goods on it's, on services. Uh, it's uh, and also it's particularly it's the it's the best way to increase the percentage uh, that you are taxing from the wealthy as well. Yeah, uh, in, yeah. in the early game. Um, uh, yeah. Like in like the later game, it starts like kind of being a burden on the middle class, but that's like, um, but like the the you're saying there's like a band of like eight hundred or like something like authority where like clothes is amongst them, or is like clothes? You, is there like see, some other? You can kind of just like see empirically. It's it's that at a certain point, especially or, again, especially if you're working with with cooperative, yeah, that you you're just going to get an enormous amount of money per authority point out of some of these things, yeah, yeah. simply because those are those are going to be produced by the buildings that are going to be high productivity based off of the resources that you have access to and the resources that the world has access to. The resources right. that the world has access to generally make it so that producing things like textile mills are going to be highly productive and therefore increase the the volume and the the velocity of money in your in your economy. And so you're yeah. gonna be building like high productivity buildings anyway, and then invariably you're just gonna end up with like oops all regular clothes. And and again, <laughs> this is not something yeah, you do th- normally. There's not but much like you sub have... goods for clothes, right? Or, or I don't think there is. Is there? Um, so simple clothing is just fabric and clothes. Fabric and clothes, but and then... after, 
after 15 um, SOL, the simple clothing disappears entirely, right, right. and they just switch over to standard clothing, which is like regular clothes, but the regular clothes are going to make up a very, very small percentage of their overall pop needs in terms of poundage. Yeah, yeah, but the, the, like, the, they, just, if they won't just over-consume it. Like, no, they won't just over-consume because, it. because uh, you have it cheap, like... Like they'll do with uh, porcelain. They'll spend the money elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. If, if your clothes are at minus 75% at a certain point, everyone's just going to spend the money on something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. I'm just... Which is good, but also it, 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 means... So like porcelain usually yields more because your uh, glasses makes it so profitable and you have way more yeah. porcelain and then it's a substitute for the two other goods. Like it's the three luxury goods together that you can use up to like 40% or whatever the number is. And so you're always eating 40% porcelain, like 100% yeah. of the time. And so like that's why that tax is like so good, but there's no like uh, the, the there's no like mechanisms that's going to make Pops over consume clothes like because right. there's no sub right. good. There's there's no sub good, but I I think that like broadly Except speaking, early, a lot of those things are things where the political decisions that you make in regards to the economic decisions that you're making should be informed by the state of politics in your nation, right? If you if you have cooperative and you have anarchist or just cooperative generally, then like the IGs that you have access to matter a lot um and the the way that your politics is structured is going to be yeah. pretty different same if you have like democracy right if you have democracy so it, it, then you have to pay a lot of attention to like what ideologies your leaders have is it because your is sol is low and you're on co-ops like simultaneously if S, yeah that it's close that is effective once it's it's if it's giving you good authority per per dollar authority per pound is like the important yeah, thing yeah, yeah, once yeah, yeah. you get to that point because well, then because at that point then the politics stop mattering at that point you should you because they're not that's not a factor anymore then you just well, say the, if you're uh, if you're trying to keep your literacy high it, it like makes a difference uh. well but it, it kind of kind of you don't need you don't need a hundred literacy no <laughs> like, no no you don't but like the, the the we're talking about small marginal differences right well it can be, but you can get a lot generate, of clothes. Generating a like lot of 1% more make, revenue or something only gives you like getting an additional 1% construction is like marginal or this whatever. Was, this was on a an earlier build. This is like prior to the GDP rework earlier build and therefore okay. the numbers don't mean anything. But I saw a screenshot from him with 1.25 million pounds for, off of the uh, the consumption tax. I, I've, on, on I've never I've never seen clothes just like look absolutely nutter. But like yeah, it's also at a it, phase of the game where I'm like, if I'm going co-ops, I'm also probably trying to wind down those taxes. And so like if it's it's possible that after if it's like the third best after porcelain and uh, services that I just didn't notice it. Yeah, uh, just look for it. Like, actually, op open your eyes. See what's there. Well, There's surprising things in the I can't open the game right now. Three. Well, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're on that, uh, we're on that yeah, toaster but there's, line. There's surprising things everywhere. Again, heuristics are meant to be a, a guide, not a straitjacket. Like, yeah. do use them, but do not let them control you. Bait. Well, some of the heuristics, I think... I, I, I mean, like, so... I, I still think the, the opinions I've formed on taxes where, like, targeting the upper strata, even if it doesn't yield you the absolute most money, is generally a good idea. Because, like, yes, the non-linear returns on, uh, well, you know, Well, because they generally are opposed to good stuff. Like, it huh? doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Landos are generally bad. So fighting yeah, them is Yeah, no, but it, it's, it's not just uh, a matter of uh, decreasing their wealth level. It's a matter of the that uh, it increases your overall SOL relative to taxing lower rung stuff because they, like, because of the exponential needs goods. Uh, I, making I mean, it take a lot. Yeah, but also uh, it makes them angry and therefore less likely to spawn moderates, eh. which is good. It, I, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't generally... At, a, at at plus five and plus ten, if I remember correctly, the oh, IGs it, it makes it makes the lower words producing it makes producing the lower rung anyway. pop less angry. I thought you were talking about the upper rung pop. The upper rung pop oh, no, no, don't no, no. don't you, care that much because their wealth barely moves because of the like nonlinear like uh, consumption. It it generally doesn't drop them a ton of SOL anyways. Yeah, mo most of the time taxes are not going to be affecting their SOL nearly as much as people worry about. Yeah. 
As long as you give them good wages, then it, it's not that important. Uh. Y well, yeah, as long as they have good wages, it's not important, yeah. Uh, as long the, as they have good wages, then taxes are not a, not that important. Uh, but the 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 it, like they're definitely important if they are poor and you tax great. <laughs> yeah, if they're poor and you tax the crap out of them, and also the price of your grain is really high, then be prepared for um, guillotines. But yeah, 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 because uh, the the poor like if you're taxing, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I have to look at this. Because a lot of times when you're on co-ops, they start consuming... The, like, once they pass a certain SOL, they just start consuming the shit out of luxury goods. And luxury goods are yeah. what's expensive. Well, that's so, that's that's the um, 15 SOL. At 15 SOL, that's yeah. when a lot of luxuries start turning online. So um, And so they have to be considerably be beyond 15 for, like, the like complete replacement, right? Because they'll... Uh, at, yeah. at exactly... The it's not a light switch. complete replacement. They stop buying standard clothes entirely at 40. Yeah, yeah. So that's, which like, is way beyond. Not, um, that is not achievable so, as a society. Not reasonably. Not reasonably. Not a large one. I, I don't think it's... Mm, yeah, I mean, you're doing weird stuff to push the SOL up to 40, I think. Uh, like, really weird stuff. Um, I'm certain it's achievable as a small nation inside of the British market, but like you're, you're I mean, it's like a specific cheese. Game yeah, yeah, the time. yeah. And you're like, it doesn't sound fun. No, it's the that sounds like terrible. The no, it, and like you're not playing the game. You're literally just pushing out so well. Like it, it's yeah. not, it's not resembling a normal game. Like I don't, I don't know what's like kind of the ceiling for a normal game. I mean, your normal game ceiling could be really high if you suck at getting more labor. Like uh, yeah, I think so. I think if you're playing well, then I think there are a couple of really really important breakpoints in terms of consumption for goods. Fifteen is one of them. Yeah, twenty is another. But after twenty, you get massively diminishing returns in yeah. terms of the the basket of goods increase. So I don't think there's like a mechanical reason to want to push past twenty one or twenty two, like. It, you get get a little bit of padding in case something weird happens in terms of economics, like yeah. especially if you're. What is got the a subject equilibrium that, point for generating the most pops, anyways? Uh, it's it's supposed to be twenty, although someone oh, miscoded something. Yeah, well, it's it was fixed in one point three point five, I think. Um, but they, there was a an issue where they. <laughs> it, incorrectly, Sorry, I only so, read tooltips. Yeah, it's okay. My mistake. Um, the the population curve is supposed to be like the best starting at around twenty because there is that decreasing birth rate while also yeah, decreasing yeah. mortality, and so you can but you can manipulate that of course by decreasing your mortality through other means, right? You do have access to healthcare if you want, and therefore you can have higher population growth by having a lower SOL which would normally create an opportunity for you to have lower population growth, but you could, you replace the, the lost pops, the worst mortality by having health care and by having workers protection. So the, the, like the real best population growth is actually probably around 16 or 17 with like max health care and worker protection. Is this now or is this before the Yeah, change? like now. Um the 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 way it was before it was actually like yeah. just this massive weird blob. Um I think it was supposed to be maxed at twenty, but in reality you start hit started hitting it at like twelve. Yeah, this isn't but something I've deep was, dived at all. Yeah. It, basically what it boils down to is if you want to maximize population growth, conquer people like that's that's the real yeah unless you're china then you just cry boils down to then you just sit around um, actually yeah but the the population growth because it comes from both birth rate and mortality and mortality is very very easily manipulated through institutions and birth rate is kind of manipulatable through women's rights but if you care about population growth chances are pretty good you care about you know uh, workforce ratio, yeah, yeah. in which case you're going to be on women's suffrage. Yeah. Because um, that's how you get, that's how you really get the most pops, is just have a high workforce ratio. Yeah. They nerfed the friggin' trade unionists' uh, workforce yeah, ratio. Yeah, well, good. Thing. That was really broken. <laughs> I still think they're the best IG even after that, so. I, it, I think it depends like, on your goal. I think, I think 
a lot of stuff in Victoria 3 is contextual, but yeah, but trade the, unions are very, very, very good. Trade unions are very, very, very good. The, the, I, I think that this is like, well, this has actually come up a lot in our discussion. I, I mean, I, I think that the context is important, but you can also announce which one's probably best, like, because you have an understanding well, of, so like, like trade context. unions. Trade unions require a lot of construction points in order to get going. So, like, there's in, inherently within yeah. the thing, you have to have an industrialized economy in order for trade unions to yeah, be yeah. the best. So are trade but, unions the best all game? Because you have access to the intelligentsia and the armed forces as an extremely, extremely, extremely conservative country, but you need almost zero technology points in order to start having a, a powerful armed forces. And armed forces have good bonuses because they help you out with the technology. They also have good bonuses because, you know, they're going to help you smash people and take their stuff. And, and, and they're also not backwards on a, a lot of different kinds of laws if you want to make updates. Yeah, but so like, in, in an abstraction, the, though, you can still say, like, the, the, like, it's, it would be, if you could have the trade unionists powerful in the early game, you would love them in the early game, too, right? So it's like, it, it's just yeah, an inability to probably, utilize them that informs them being, the, like, right, not good Right, but that context sense. matters, though, is the, is the thing, is that, like... The, the context of you do not have access to a powerful trade union in 1836 with basically any country is important. Yeah, yeah. well, but the... I, yeah, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like, I just, it, I, we're just in a different spot in terms of the words we want to use to talk about the thing. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Humans use language in strange ways. It's, uh, like, and, 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 yeah, I... I <laughs> The, I, the, yeah, I just want to evaluate it more in a vacuum while recognizing that, like, at the start of the game, like, you can't use the trade unionists at all. Yeah. Uh, and I just, if you could, I, you would. I think that, broadly speaking, evaluating things in a vacuum in a game is complex with as many interconnected things between the mechanics in Victoria 3. I, I think the vacuum doesn't exist. I think that trying to, because that's, that's where people start thinking about, like, autarky and, like, the importance of controlling the price of goods within a market in a way that kind of a is not inherent in the text and and b is also well, bad for their nation the i think i mean i think that example is a little bit different because i think that thinking about prices is just not something it's, well, it's, it's not, not that you good, shouldn't but do like, it but it's not like it, you should you shouldn't be focused on prices like it's a trap like, so like let's let's look let's look in terms at of gameplay. something a, a little less because I think people, I think everyone should agree that the trade unions are good when you can make them powerful. But then yeah. there are things like the devout, which actually are also very useful, the but devout are largely insane. misunderstood. Yeah. They're really, really useful, but misunderstood. They well, can attract. They can attract aristocrats. They're there, right there. And yeah. so, if you want to make your landowners weak, it's not a question of of like, okay, just the, build up a powerful industrialist. You can make your landowners crazy weak insanely fast, even without a civil war. You just have to use the IGs that you have available to you. And and devout and yeah. armed forces and and uh, the the intelligentsia are all really happy to take aristocrats and bite yeah, because that's where I, like I, the I think the, the devout the suffers a lot because uh, intelligentsia is just uh, in a general abstracted sense better and they have competing I, I, like uh things that are going on i think the devout suffers a lot from the the legitimacy rework because the devout used to be like insanely 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 useful um it like they were they were they still are easily one of the most useful things when it comes they, they to have japan. some of the best bonuses and if you're like yeah. china or japan specifically then like you the there's a consideration to discussion between like if you could have one powerful between them and the intelligentsia which one is it you know like with China, it probably is them. Uh, another problem is they also fall off late game, and there's like not a good way to preserve they, they have, them uh, because of the literacy they, stuff. The literacy problem, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, you could just depress your literacy. You could just be like, yeah, you can do that. You, I'm you, keeping you the literacy low for the need bonus. A level five education. Yeah, you can. You You're, can get all the technology you need. You can but... just say the pop growth is what's more, what's important to me, and I'm just yeah. gonna, I'm sticking. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. The but like, uh, I still think the in general, like, uh, uh, if someone says, uh, 
if I don't like, well, I guess it depends if I feel like start, starting an argument. The the bonuses of the devout are good, uh, but if someone says the devout are bad, like I'm not gonna like object to that statement. Uh, but if someone gives a like tirade about how the devout's bonuses suck, I would object to that. You know, it's just like the because I yeah, like I, the, I think. I think the the difference between us here is that I, I'm I'm way 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 less happy doing hot takes even if they like are, are good at I wouldn't call it a hot take I'd call it a brief take yeah I don't know? like that either <laughs> to be fair I like I like don't, nuanced I, takes I, don't... I like only nuanced <laughs> takes I the the I like nuanced takes and then at times I think nuanced takes are a mistake. Like, it's not that the take is wrong, it's that making the take is wrong. I, I think that, I think when it you depends need to on convey, what your goal is. It depends, ex exactly, yeah. it depends on what your goal is. Sometimes conveying information quickly is more important, and like, yeah. uh, uh, especially like in, in social settings, like, uh, just the vibe is more important than like, so, perfect information. <laughs> what, what's your What's your goal with your channel? Because like my goal with my channel is just Stonks. to get people stop being. I want to make the line go that's up. That's like that's my old. That's You're my on Reddit goal. a lot. Want, to be honest, I want people to stop being dumb on Reddit. That's why I made a YouTube channel. Good luck. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> I mean, like I'm I'm uh, I'm trying to generate revenue doing something I enjoy. I also have two other YouTube channels that are like not anywhere remotely related to victoria 3 like one where i yeah. like lift heavy weights and one where like i talk about books and politics and so the uh i mean like i generate revenue at this point so like that part is nice and that is why i do a lot more on this channel than the other ones yeah i think um, that's reasonable i um, think i think it's context right I'd, it's yeah. context uh yeah i i started doing a lot more tutorials like uh when they were doing good as opposed to playthroughs i would probably just like uh if we're talking pure enjoyment i would probably play the game and do like fewer tutorials i'm not fueled by a seething hatred of the idiots on reddit um, i i'm not i don't hate them i want to help them geez. i want to help them you don't let me make the funny take and then you should have just vibed off the the hatred i can't i can't do it i can't do it <laughs> with the nuance now oh no i can't do it I the can't hatred do it. is Sorry. content what are you doing <laughs> let the hate flow through you <laughs> never yeah, the, the, no, that's fair the, I have I have important I have important aliens to dis to dissect. Yeah, yeah, that's like the the I mean like a lot of the I see a lot of the takes on Reddit. Generally on Reddit, I'm just uh, kind of trying to enjoy myself. I make a lot of like non-substantive yeah. comments on Reddit. The uh, the subreddits for basically every video game that's ever existed are simultaneously very very good for the community because they encourage people to communicate. And very bad for the community because they encourage the wrong people to communicate. It's <laughs> that ridiculous. sounds like terrible. Yeah, it's just like, uh, like I'm just like out there, like me make line go up. It's like, yep, done my duty for today. And then sometimes I like, yeah, I mean you've seen some of my comments. Sometimes I do. Yeah, no, I, I think like, I think you are a good and useful uh, and productive thing in the community there. Yeah, I don't know about productive, but. Uh. I need to start if doing more destructive work. Think... I need to. That's what I need to do. I gotta the... do more shit. Take meme posts. Do it. I mean, <laughs> the, as long as, as long as it's destroying something, d the destructive impulse is also a creative yeah. one, right? The, the void calls. Okay, there's one more. There's one more thing to discuss. There's one more thing oh, to okay. discuss. <laughs> like and then, because I, I want to keep it under three hours, I did say I don't mind if it goes long, but I I think three hours is probably. Uh, the limit, so what are we at? We're at 250, okay. Uh, so, okay. The, the this one is, what do you do in the late game? Because this came up, and we saw a subreddit post, and uh, we both saw it, uh, and yeah. someone was complaining, well, what do you do in the late game? Late game, everything goes to shit. Uh, I think we both know, like, kind of what happens in the late game. You run out of resources, and the IPT yeah. goes to zero, and it causes a depressed economy where everything is cheap, uh, except for the resources, which are expensive, which you can't build. Uh, yeah, so, I think largely, 
I think a that that person is not experiencing this based off of what I read there because they were saying that they hadn't even attacked Austria yet playing as her, as Sicily. I think they didn't so acquire more that, resources. Is that I problem? think that person in particular probably was just like relatively new. But like once you get to the late game if you are in that issue where raw resources are just ev super expensive because you've built everything out and you've conquered half of the world then like do whatever makes then that's vibe right <laughs> sometimes it can be accurate sometimes it can be good to just build buildings that have input good shortages as long as they're they're productive then it doesn't matter like the it, the money yeah. is still there and the way that the economy works in victoria 3 is that cap prices cap at 75 percent yeah if you're playing as china and the textile mill still hires someone then build it yeah. As long as it's as long as it's productive, then I build it. The sh um, the, the degree but... to which the shortage is a pro applying a penalty is like proportional to how big the shortage is. Yeah, and so. and sometimes it's an issue, and sometimes it's not, and sometimes you have enough construction points that that is itself a solution. Like so, if... yeah, that's the point I generally make is don't stop building because a huge portion of yeah. your economy, like the steel and all the the tools and all this, is being like put up by the construction you're doing it's but it'd be better to delete and then rebuild buildings than stop constructing. yeah for sure yeah or you could build like, more don't, military don't... but you probably don't need it yeah. <laughs> well i mean at a certain point the ai does start to back down they're yeah. not as happy doing it as they yeah, probably yeah. should well, be but also to be do sometimes to be fair the steamships pm is also like really really efficient so like expanding yeah. the navy especially if the if your if your convoys are cheap and you're like you know, in your steam, or sorry, if your steamers are cheap and your convoys are expensive, or if your military ships are cheap, uh, then expanding the military, actually expanding the navy, is a really good way to inject money in the economy because the steamship PM is like so efficient, like it's it creates it adds a lot to your GDP. So, like, yeah, um, specifically adding a lot of navy at the end is like if the if the, the navy is also one of the things that's like super important when it comes to the ai behaviors because they they will back down a lot more frequently if you have a giant navy yeah and so you don't like well it's like uh <laughs> they it gives you so much power projection yeah because like, you right? power projection it gives you the ability especially if you can just like prestige bomb in yeah. and make it so that people aren't great powers anymore yeah yeah if you're if your prestige is a hundred thousand you're not going to have a lot of other great powers running around because everyone is going to drop out of competition yeah so i think what you what you should do with a, a late game economy in victoria 3 with the current amount of raw resources in the game right now is do whatever you want to um but if you're in the position that this player was then I think that you should, A, when you're posting this sort of stuff on Reddit, post screenshots. I love screenshots because yeah. it gives us more information about where you are. Like, if this player posted a screenshot and they had a hundred construction points then that would tell us that would tell us something because i've seen those posts right you've seen those yeah posts, yeah too, i've I'm seen sure. that i've seen those and, posts usually yeah, when people and, have any amount of construction i tell them to double it right usually but like no i mean any amount context <laughs> any it doesn't matter it's just like 9k it's like points, they're actually do, they're it. doing okay it's like nine thousand. it's like hey, have you tried doubling it double it, double it. <laughs> That it's usually a good solution for things. This is doubling every every ten years, but um, like I think I think this game is so complicated and has so many different things going on that you probably should provide screenshots and also Definitely. tell us your goal. Also tell us your goal, because like what you're trying to do with your late game economy is way less important than what you're trying to do with your early and mid-game economy. Let's assume you're trying... Your early and mid-game economy is about industrialization. Your late-game economy is about accomplishing to, whatever it is your to goal To provide is. a context, let's assume that your goal is always making the line go up as much as possible. If your goal is to always make the line go up as much as possible in the late game, then mm -hmm. you should just be on, like, you should be on World Conquest. You absolutely yeah. should just be declaring war on people, puppeting true. them, and then annexing them. I am that the is, market. That is the you are the market if your goal Switch is to, to make line go up once you hit like 1.2 billion gdp and you're stronger than all of the other great powers then ignore infamy declare war on people puppet them and then declare war on them again five more years and annex them yep. and that is that is the best way to make line go up um but Sad it's also 
not interesting unless unless you're unless you just got like the conquer bug. Right, right. If you if you want to fight people, that's I don't the way know. To go. I don't understand people. Well, I mean, I kind of understand people who are like that, but and play this game. But like, it's like, dude, why are you playing this instead of Hoey? It's like it's always a little I, bit I've strange to me. I've, I've I've enjoyed doing that. It's Ask, fun okay. sometimes. Sometimes I've done it, but like I'm saying, the people the who that's their primary like motivation yeah, I, re I really would love them to rebalance the game such that conquest is way worse i mean uh, it, it is worse now because of the radicals generating like the turmoil now generates state construction efficiency right yeah and state construction efficiency is kind of the only stat that matters um and that's and so that means that turmoil matters like way 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 more now than it did in 1.1 and 1.2 and so doing like just insane world conquest starting on day one is still good but way less useful but at a certain point like in a, a in a non-joking sense right at, a, at yeah. a certain point the easiest way to increase your gdp is just grab stuff i i think that yeah it's definitely grab stuff i think if you don't want to grab stuff uh, also it's important to just grab the resources proactively throughout the entire game a lot of times yeah. people yeah, like yeah. make reddit posts and they say oil steel or oil iron and coal are too expensive and it's like what do i do and it's like i don't know play different 20 years ago Is yeah did you it? did you invade zulu like yeah. asap and then from there orange and dry because if you didn't you missed out yeah uh the You're right there especially if someone else has them now that's the worst uh yeah but then the the second thing, like, when you get really big is you just need to spend as much as, uh, as the government as possible. And it almost doesn't matter what you spend it on because construction is not going to be very efficient anymore, you know? Yeah. Because um, you're, you're probably at the point where uh, often there's huge level of unemployment and they won't employ because the equilibrium, uh, like, profitability of the buildings is too bad because all the industries the prices are too depressed and so it doesn't matter if you just build more buildings they, they won't employ and so it just doesn't matter what you do as long as you just spend as much money as possible because the spending will increase consumption which will increase profitability and it'll increase employment you, yep. you, you can also that's, delete your agriculture like <laughs> you can also delete your that agriculture like and rebuild for throughput this is the other thing uh, yeah, but in order to delete your agriculture, you need to not be in laissez-faire. And what are you? What are you doing? Are you not in laissez-faire? <laughs> not at that point. Uh, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, usually, you're you want to be co-op. Co yeah. Uh, if everything's going to plan, you're probably in co-op. But let's, if you are on, let's say you don't want to go co-op because you hate communism, uh, then you could go interventionism. Like interven at that point, interventionism is better, so you can delete and rebuild. Yeah, at that at that point, intervention is better. Yeah. Better once again, once yeah. you're once you're at equilibrium, you're, or, you have or, fifty or capital you have doesn't matter, whatever. Sixty arable land in a province, and you have thirty cotton places and thirty dye places. It's so much better to delete one and then just build all the other. Yeah, um, I guess for the the viewers, it's because it increases throughput, and so it'll increase your overall output by like forty percent of those goods. Or not forty yeah, percent because it's like marginal on top of already thirty percent, but like that's the idea. That's one of those one of those things that still drives me bananas is that the the total arable land I think probably should be reworked as well. Like the way oh, that yeah. arable land works, I think should be reworked. Right now, one one point of arable land has a hundred thousand carrying capacity, yeah. which means that like overall it's basically impossible to make a an agricultural economy that's capable of capturing any meaningful amount of investment and that's just like not descriptive of the real world no. it's not like it, industrialization came in a couple of different phases but the second one was the second industrial revolution which is the 1870s and 1880s and it wasn't until then that agriculture stopped being the largest sector of the great power economies yeah. but most of the rest of the world was still an agricultural economy until then and continued to be an agricultural economy afterwards and it's just because like if you build all of the arable land away and you lose all of those peasant jobs, yeah. you can employ f three to four percent of your population in agriculture because you only get like three or four thousand jobs per building level it's... and you get a hundred thousand pop carrying capacity they, they... and you can go over pop carrying capacity. They, they need to rework arable land and not it's... just like distribute it more. They need to rework it entirely. The well, they, it I think right the, now, the no fact sense. that migration is attached to it is a huge driver for why arable land looks like what it does, and like I don't yeah. think it should be attached. 
but like yeah it probably should not be attached but also like just if it was 10,000 carrying capacity per pop of or point of arable land then they could also increase dramatically the amount of arable land and therefore also pay respect to the yeah. fact that you get 51 level if you want to build a level 51 in order to maximize your throughput bonus and there are like you only like half of the states in the world can you even build that in anymore yeah because of, of the way they distribute it that makes no sense and that's and that's building just one level 51 plantation never mind multiple which is what you should be able to do in like big agricultural I, states, I definitely, right? Yeah, it's no sense. That's so stupid. The, another one I really hate is the available arable land gives an absolutely enormous migration bonus. Yeah, and they've used so building this, a single plantation is just awful for you. Uh, it will like the the like the new world will siphon off so many more pops than any place that has a bunch of uh you know, uh available employment at high wages. Yeah, it, uh, it in, independent of any work there, but the subsistence farms, which makes no sense. Uh, yeah, no, the the game should reward you more for playing instead of punishing you. Yeah, and like the 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 way that it's bootstrapped, like everything is bootstrapped to the arable land, like in terms of yeah, you know, or I guess it's just migration and like the pops and like this type of stuff, but it's just it just shouldn't be. Also, Australia has zero arable land. Basically. Yeah, the, A, the distribution makes no sense, B, the levels make no sense, and C, because arable land produces yeah. the agricultural buildings, which of course create the economies and the societies, it, it also means that it's functionally impossible to end up with an accidentally powerful landowner in the, the late game, unless you don't know what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Maybe this isn't a small change, but that would be like a change I would want to see that I don't think is necessarily enormous, like it's not a new mechanic, but I'd love to see arable land divorced from uh, migration. Yeah. Because it I creates a the, huge amount of things that seems stupid. I've I've been on the, we need to rework arable land since like 1.2 like when they yeah, were like, when oh yeah, they, we're doing it right now. Is that when like, they no, nerfed, That's uh, bad. They just nerfed the, they just like said, let's make it just have double the thing. Because they needed to nerf all the Chinese land because it had like 1500 arable land, right? Or they felt the need yeah, to that's... nerf it, and then they like, boy, did they nerf it! <laughs> yeah, they nerfed it, but also like fifteen hundred arable land is like totally fine. It's think about how many construction points it's... that is versus a couple of level fifty industrial buildings, right? Like, I, there's a, I, I, a... I think that they didn't want to create like an unbalance of like uh, the the like mineral resources versus the arable resources or something like this. Yeah. But uh, would, I, be, would be I my guess. Probably, probably. I don't. But I, I, I think, I think we're mostly on the same page in regards to yeah, yeah, just definitely. raw resources. I'm just generally wondering about the it. The well, I don't, I don't know if I think necessarily they should be. I, I, I think I'm there not are, sure they should be in. Well, I don't know. I, th I think, I think understanding that performance is is a an important goal is one thing, but also that verisimilitude is is important. Yeah. In that the way things are currently structured means that, like, if you have any idea what you're doing, you start deindustrializing in like the 1890s, which is insane. There's no reason for that. Yeah, or that yeah, you're no focused sense. on the like, like at a certain point, you if you've built enough stuff, you really can't well, I mean, afford maybe that's... to run automation technologies anymore, which is maybe that's silly. why they're just trying to slow you down then. Like that, to make it that, more in line. Is that the right? Is that the right solution? It right. Might be. If, if there's, is it? Is it? Might, might it? No, be, but you're you're be? talking about uh, the. You should be able to industrialize like infinitely. Well, I, my my point right? being that a, I think that the way that the arable land is currently worked means that agricultural strategies are like inherently unviable in a way that is non-representative of the 19th century. I agree with that. I think a like, big part of it, that is also investment pool, but that's part you. of that is also investment pool. That that is that is a a rubber band ball that is very difficult to disentangle. Yeah. But I think that the combination of a lot of different decisions that Paradox has made has both produced it, as we said at the beginning, it's produced a game that's both good and has a lot of problems. Yeah. 
yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, the, the air will, I don't know, there's so many things that are just, like, more of a priority. I was so annoyed when they released this, like, uh, this dev deck, or it wasn't, like, so annoyed, I was, I was excited, but, like, I was, part of me was annoyed that they, like, didn't talk about military at all. And that was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that's the thing that's supposed to be fixed. And this just seems like a weird. I didn't ask for that. Uh, it, this I don't seems hate like it, a, but an like, ad for a DLC. Yeah, I guess. I it's like it's not something. It's like, uh, well, actually, it's frustrating because I feel like the community has been overwhelmingly consistent in their feedback, like from game launch, that there was three things that really sucked: uh, the military, the diplomacy, and the UI. Uh, they fixed the UI. And now the military and diplomacy still suck. And no one's being like, there aren't any corporations. This is stupid. Well, I guess there are some people yeah. out there. There, are, like there that, are a but... handful of people asking for, you know, more. And I think that inherently it's not a bad idea to have capital yeah. behave. As you said earlier, like, if, if they can start doing politics on their own, awesome. But the way that we've seen what Paradox thinks companies should look like is uninteresting. Yeah. Well, like, it's, uh, to be fair, it's also, like, a really early version, and, like, it's gonna be developed more in this sort of thing, and I think, like, it potentially has, like, really, like, long-term, uh, like, differences. I, I want something that makes it so that, like, uh, the way I play a country is, like, different for other countries, and I, I know you're gonna say context matters, and, like, in the early game it's different, but, like, eventually it's all homogenous, and, like, uh, what country I'm playing doesn't... I no i think that to me is a feature and not a bug but i i think that that is probably a walker problem yeah, but i the the I, i'm not talking about uh correctly simulating like the real world i'm talking about um replayability making like a making game. the game fu more fun you want to yeah. make a good game <laughs> Sorry. you monster i apologize you monster. for my uh hubris i wanted to get i wanted to make the game a little bit more fun i wanted i wanted to do a starting steps video where i was like and now we conquer zulu <laughs> i i wanted to yeah. stop saying that <laughs> well i mean like no but i i think there is value to at least highlighting hey here are the important areas to go to i mean oh, I, I do too I, which is why i've done it yeah. 17 times yeah yeah yep Yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's, like, uh, it, 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 but it, it, I don't know. I think, the, there's I also think specialization. Local prices, I think local prices and I think local I think prices make and making the AI better actually might go a long way to making. I definitely think the AI getting differently. better would be nice. Also, like local prices, I would build a ton of paper in Sicily. Like, yeah. Uh, or I, that's not even the only thing that you can build with sulfur, but like sulfur is the best, uh, like most efficient, like, uh, industry as far as, uh, until you don't care about IPT. Uh, yeah, so. I think, I think broadly speaking, 1.4 and 1.5 look kind of okay, I guess, except for a couple of really big changes that look awesome. Like, the, the changes to AI imperialism look really good. The changes to local yeah. prices look really good. I've complained. Convoy rating needed to be fixed because it just didn't work correctly. But, like, I guess one the, fix is the convoy the system is the other. so opaque. And as well as the naval yeah. military. Like, uh, also, yeah, naval like, is... the navies are just, like... I mean, we talked about it earlier, but, like, uh, the if you're using multi-landings, you never need more than, like, ten boats or whatever to, like, do whatever you want. Uh... Militarily. I, I, militarily, but diplomatically yeah, yeah. and there's, from a there's prestige a, standpoint, and also they're still it, really efficient. Sometimes you have less of a headache. Yeah, specifically annexing like Peru, Bolivia is actually kind of a pain in the ass without a lot of boats. Yeah, um, because they have like no infrastructure on the coast, and so uh, the it's very the, you can the land combat with width, one unit. The combat width is uh, very small, so like the the you actually need more landings to land Peru, Bolivia than you do the UK. <laughs> yeah, I just I like broadly, I don't know. It's it, I I think it's a philosophical difference. Like broadly, I just don't do triple landings because I, I no, think yeah, it's that fair. In, That's in I mean, it's obviously an exploit. Is... Yeah. But uh, it's it, yeah. There, it's that, also that is an exploit that's not supposed to operate that way. Uh, it's also like the the specifically like uh, I mean we talked we we did talk about this earlier, but like the there are contexts where like the without doing it the AI is just uh, it's impossible to do what you want to do. Like it's impossible to line home counties with exactly one navy if they're like 
uh, reasonably well developed. Uh, uh, you know, because you can have, have 120 you stacks. To, have yeah. you ever attempted to do a like convoy rating net net around the home counties for a year first? Because it actually does a really big number on their ability to defend. I mean, I did in my Spain run, but this is a while ago now. So this is one point two. Yeah. But um, I I mean, I did in like one point two. They would also do it to themselves. But I did like all their yeah, ports. yeah. So like th- no, that was one point three. They started deleting the ports. One point two is what that was the patch when they built them up to level twenty. Uh, I think, no, I think 1.2, because 1.2 is when they went on Christmas break, and then, and that was with the, the port deletion problem, and people were posting about it on Reddit for a long time. Are you sure? And it was, yeah. I thought that was the level was, 20 port era. Uh, it, so 1.2 had a lot of problems. 1.2 had a lot of problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a public <laughs> it beta. It went back I, and it, forth. So it, I, I think that, uh, this was early, early 1.2. When I yeah, think early, early they, 1.2 they, they was said, level like, 20, yeah, and I so think... then they overcorrected and just made the AI, like, yeah. not care about forts, yeah, the, and then the... they, they introduced the port deletion bug and then went on Christmas the, break. The context of the Spain <laughs> run was the level 20 ports. Um, so yeah. basically, maybe that's why the convoy rating didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, if they uh, have like, 10,000 convoys. The, it also, the, uh, the, this was also pre-convoy nerf of, like, 1.3. Uh, and so, like, uh, for those who are new, I guess, listening, uh, but, uh, the, uh, when I would land, they would be defending with over 200 battalions. Yeah. So, and that, that there's, it's, and when I would land bizarre. in Scotland, they would also be defending with, like, 150 battalions, because they never, uh, the AI, for whatever reason, would never commit a single, like, troop to anywhere but the homeland. They would just sit. They would intervene in my war and then just sit and, uh, okay. Uh, but it was literally impossible for me to land them, like, uh, without a multi-landing. There, there's nothing, I, well, I mean, like, yeah, if, I don't know, if like, if you're talking about building, like, bug at that point, several it would be, hundred, it would be yeah, impossible so, to convoy so maybe, the con- maybe the context of me not being able to convoy raid is, like, uh, particular, but, like, I, I don't think, I guess I could have built, uh, 2,000 boats and navally, like, uh, raided with, like, uh, 1,900 while I just repeatedly tried to land with the last maybe but like um because i mean the way it should work is you should actually be able to naval you should be able to navally land with like multiple navies and multiple armies and it should just uh like be able to re uh re assign fronts and landings uh, that might be one of the things that does in fact fix with with 1.5 because yeah. they're talking about having multiple battles per front and stuff like that so so like but if you we'll la- see, if your landing but... went in and you're 100 into 200 and then uh another landing in went in and 100 and the 200 to split into two 100s like that would be fine yeah that'd be fine i they've they've got ways to do it i the reason yeah. that I'm happy to to do this podcast episode with you is that yeah. I I have hope still that that paradox is gonna so naive sorry make, <laughs> I kidding. you know I have hope but hope but no investment the low hanging like, fruit I, I, I don't play need other to call games you I don't know man I don't <laughs> I I believe I believe that if they if they have the time and resources and dedication that that Victoria three will become probably like a nine out of ten. But I think it's still kind of floating at around a seven out of ten I think for they, me. They got a. I think they have to delete. I think they have to come up off the pops. I think it's too many calculations, or make the Clashwitz engine yeah. multi-thread. I, I like. I think it's kind of because it seems to me when they talk about like every single proposition that gets made, like they're like, well, you know, performance is really a concern here, and it's like. Yep. Uh. That's... Well, it's, yeah, I mean, and it seems on some level that's, like, a core element of the game, so, like, uh, if it's core element of the game, then you just, like, you just need multi-threading, right? I I suspect that probably they bit off more than they could chew and designed a game, designed to model a lot of things without necessarily getting the performance down pat and now they are going to have to fix a lot of stuff in post yeah i I actually don't work there i actually now have the perfect your your comment inspired me i now have the perfect response to one small thing that would make the game way better is uh currently the zeppelin tech does virtually nothing uh make a zeppelin military uh pm and have little zeppelins zooming around the map in the battles that would make me happy 
That would be awesome, actually. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's the tech currently does basically nothing. It gives you, like, plus 10 prestige or whatever. Like, that's what the tech does. It's, like, the most useless tech. They literally uh, just wanted to have a Zeppelin in their video uh, on their cover or whatever. And, like, that seems like it. And so I demand a Zeppelin as my tiny yeah. little change. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, I think we've got quite a long time. Uh, this yeah. has been We Play Games. If you uh, can't read, because it's up there, or if you're just listening, because it's not up there if you're just listening, uh, you can find his YouTube uh, just by simply, you know, searching We Play Games, or W ampersand E, or actually, you can search We Play Games and you come up, right? You can search We Play Games. Yeah. It will come up. But in, in case you, you are looking for me, I think the easiest way to get there is probably the link. Yes, uh, there's going to be a link uh, down below. I think I can also, like, uh, plus and, like, make it collab. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to plug, like Instagram, threads? Uh, uh, no, but I do want to plug a philosophical construct called Good Art's Law, that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. And I think that's the important context that I want to give people, is that by by prioritizing one thing versus another thing versus another thing you're always going to shape not only your own behavior but your observations of the behaviors so if you're maximizing line go, line go up just be aware you're going to play the the game towards that right yeah i i like plugging philosophy that's i think that's you've my upset my audience here questioning the Good. line <laughs> The line is our, our Lord and Savior. The line is a lie. Line. Everything is a lie. All human <laughs> observation is nonsense. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's fair enough. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so it has been a pleasure. Uh, I'm going to hit stop recording, and so this will be bye to the viewers, although we might talk for like another couple minutes, but the viewers get to see nothing. <laughs>